Hello and welcome to Totally Oblivious. I am your host, Caleb Perez. I'm here with co-host Alex, and today we have two guests, my brother Colby, who destroyed the podcast two episodes ago, and <laughs> my father, who is a uh, Scoutmaster. Uh, Scoutmaster, do you have anything to say? I don't know where I got that <laughs> that uh, title, Scoutmaster. We'll but... talk about that later. Okay. okay, give the mic back to Colby. <laughs> uh, and then we also have Andrew on sound as uh, per yeah, sometimes. Yeah, you can clearly tell with the set set up, it's working. <laughs> it's working. It's working. So Colby Andrew's is not next here. to the roadcaster. <laughs> uh, Andrew's <laughs> currently listening to the audio, just in case. I, I you might have PTSD at this point. I don't know. Working with us. Yeah, especially after our, our best episode had the camera cut off in the last 10 minutes with Andrew Fry. But now we have a, 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 a full... Time camera worker? <laughs> the camera has a full time job. Now. I think technically, yeah, Andrew. Well, I don't know, Andrew's. The camera is is. is I bought is a the, camera. All right, let's let's just simplify it. I bought a camera. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb doesn't pay me. <laughs> I pay you with chicky nuggies. <laughs> That's about it. You no, know, actually, he's not wrong. The amount of times we've gone to to Wendy's and I've tried <laughs> we get something for Andrew, nuggets. and I'm there like might a, just be like. Caleb might be Caleb's being courteous, but I'm there like actually the, might be a fact that you don't Eric get paid. Me, master got me walking. <laughs> they never finished. Oh man, master guy set me free. I love. Shut up, lo- Cartman. Shut up, Cartman. Anyways, uh, today's episode, if you cannot tell, is outside next to a campfire. I feel the bugs on my legs already, or am I just being weird? You're not supposed to respond. <laughs> it, it happens. It's just your bloodline. Your entire bloodline likes to roast me. That's, yeah. it. That's what it is. I think everyone's bloodline what likes to I roast say to you. you. <laughs> Existing. Anyways, this is the camping episode. We are not technically... Well, I, technically, ca- anytime you're outside with a campfire, that is camping. Or is it just a fire? Because there's technically no camp. Shut up, Alex. I'm, I think it's just a fire. Oh, excuse me. Actually, I think it's just a fire uh, going and everything, and just kind of like like right here, you know, like you're a not rest forest, fire. Okay, you know, you're in a big backyard with trees and everything. It's a quiet solitude and just the fire going. And uh, uh, to me, it's, I think that's almost like camping. There you go. We also would have had wolves in the background, but the wolves uh, they're they're, try- they're, they're trying nice. to pull a great mistake part two by unplugging. That is everything. true. That's a good analogy. They we really wanted that. to. Uh, they were about to knock over the entire roadcaster by walking through the wires. So they're gone. They're over there pouting because they can't be on screen. They'll never get to be on screen at this point. They're not wolves or huskies. Yeah, Caleb likes to over exaggerate here. <laughs> Their kill count says otherwise. The, what, what episode was that? Episode four or five? Episode three. <laughs> episode, are you the Wikipedia page I, that I, I've always I, been reading about? The Wikipedia page. That's the great reveal. Anyways, camping. I th- I'm sure we've all gone camping here. I've been glamping. That's glamping. That's not true. He's been camping at least once. What? Explain glamping. It's where you have an R. Okay. So in the in the camping community, uh, there's a debate where what defines camping. This is I, this is what I'm trying to be a meme here. And what it says is that actual camping is finding a random spot in the forest, getting your tent set up. Get, just, just, and getting a fire going. Glamping is where you go into an RV park around a forest, and <laughs> my dad doesn't approve. Well, no, I'm just, I'm just saying that's in, in the, in the camping community or whatever you want to call it. That there is a, <laughs> there's a bit of a difference. So you got toiletries and one ten or one twenty light to hook up. To, or yeah, that, basically. You got TV and everything. Yep. That is not. <laughs> Alex, see, Alex, so, okay, then he would agree that. He would agree that is, that, is, that is glamping. I had TVs and PS4. <laughs> Alex just plays games the whole time. He's well, camping. no, no. It's called glamping. I mean, why glamping? It's called glamorous camping. Glamorous. Oh, gl- glamping. I thought maybe fake camping. Oh. You're faking it. You're not camping. You're faking it. Yeah, okay. Now, that base? Your dad is based, bro? <laughs> he's, I, I think he's had this on his chest for a while. No, no, no. It makes <laughs> sense. He's been uh, meaning uh, to. Always did that. Get, get the mic closer. Get, get the mic closer. Uh, a friend of mine at work, uh, he always said that we're going to go camping. He takes a big old RV and they hook up to a 120 outlet, <laughs> toiletries and everything. It's like, that is not camping. camping. While we're out there, out towards Republic, mm-hmm. or later on we're going to talk about yeah, this, yeah, yeah. you know, is out in the middle of nowhere. Nowhere. Out in the middle of nowhere. Your dad is based, bro. That's he, all I have to say He's here. been camping for probably since the day he was born. Uh, well, kind of, because uh, we did, uh, my parents were... We're poor, you know. They worked in the, you know, they 
migrant workers. So yeah, mm. we lived out in in the woods sometimes. So yeah, I guess so. There you go. Yeah. No, he, the only reason why I stuff. say that is the only significant memory. I don't even think Andrew, Andrew might have been around for this, but there was a time where uh, my dad and a few of his friends we went to like basically an RV park and fish and stuff. I that was the, this vividly. Were you with were you, were you with this story? And we went fishing and stuff, and yeah. So Andrew, went, I don't fishing poles. Yeah, that was the only time I went camping, quote unquote. But I've never gone to the middle of nowhere with the homie, got set up, in in the middle of nowhere. That I haven't done yet, which I want to do. It there is on the bucket list. I would like to do that. Yeah, when you go out there in the middle of nowhere is when you got an outhouse. To go your I'm not even an outhouse, a ditch, <laughs> a hole. Sometimes you had to do that because the outhouse is pretty stinky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had a, it we gets had a pretty porta bad. potty on that one site. That you yeah, we yeah, we did. I remember. I remember the tent. It started raining and it was like really windy, and I was, I was scared for my life. I was a little three year old, four year old scared. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, oh, yeah, all of that just to say no, no. <laughs> okay. So, Caleb, I guess you're leading this podcast. Here. I will lead it. I guess I'll start. Well, the the main idea is we'll talk about our camping stories or glamping sco- stories if you're Alex and Andrew. <laughs> Uh, hey, we've been camping once. Okay, been, I don't think we've been actually camping I don't, once. <laughs> I don't one time I went to the dunes at the same time, so it was dry. It was dry camping. Dramping. It was, it was not fun. I avoided the RV at all top cost. <laughs> See, Andrew was at least trying to make an effort. He made an effort. There was a beach like a quarter mile down, so I was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> when was that? When was that story? Uh, April. This is a boys trip. Oh, um, the boys Ace. trip. Team Ace. Yeah, because we all of our names start with A, so. That's a weird thing about Ace. the Fernandez. There's a lot of A's. That a is lot true. Of A's. I never even thought my about dad, that. My dad's name is Alex, too. You know, that is true. That is true. We are literally all C's. We're all C's in our name. Yeah. So. Was that, was that, a, was that an idea on your part or no? Um, actually, yes, it was, because uh, it's been, um, I guess... A tradition in my dad's, you know, my dad's family. Mm-hmm. Cause my dad's uh, all, uh, all their brothers and sisters all began with C, so I went with that. My mom's, um, uh, no, it was all mixed up. But anyway, mm-hmm. it was, it's something my a tradition my dad started, and I just figured I'd just go with that and c- go with the C's. So now there's now there's there there now it's on you too, and the third one in there. Well. Or somewhere. Candace already screwed up. Only one of hers, technically none of hers are with the C. Cliff could still name his with a C. Well, that's his middle name. Well, if my if, if the Pernatas say uh, there's still a name in my dad's name, middle wise, I I think that still counts vaguely. Okay. According to rules, Alex has to call his child Carlos Miguel. Yeah. Right. No, I, wait. Do I? <clears throat> yep. Do I? I guess that's apparently the rule now. Well, I, I just, um, what do you guys think about uh, having the C name? Having this, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no, <laughs> that, no, that's a good lineage. question. Yeah, like, how do you feel about having all you guys? Have, do you guys feel uh, individualistic having very similar names? Because like people always name. okay. Well, the thing is, <laughs> no, here's the thing: people get you guys confused because you look alike. On top of the fact, both your names are very similar. So how do you? I'm just that actually is a pretty good question. Oh, Colby hates his name. <laughs> I'm pretty okay with my name. I think Caleb. Honestly, I, you. I I like the letter C, so I think that I I, I like my That's name. A, it's a pretty top I'm okay tier. With my name. It's pretty top there. I I think I think it's like I don't know how to describe. It. I, I think like it gives your family character by having like a tradition to name your kids a certain way. Like Chris names his kids things that we don't even know what he's saying. That part I don't get. That's an inside joke. That, that, that's a family joke. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I uh, I like my name. Colby might not. Nope. Cliff is just Cliff. I like my middle my name. Father, I wish so. I was by my middle name. But hey, people go by Andrew's middle name. Why don't you? Are you too far down lo- in the life now? That I'm it doesn't matter. Far. The reason why I wasn't named Christian was because my cousin's name is Christian and oh. we're not Christian Christopher. You like Christopher? Well, Christopher is my cousin's name. Uh, and we're like the same age, so yeah, he he couldn't go by Chris. <laughs> uh, that sucks. I'm gonna be honest though, but bro, we have a whole bunch of Alexes though. No one really cared about that rule. Oh, There's your kid's name's Alex, or yeah, mine too Alex too. Mine, Alex too. <laughs> yeah, basically. Andrew oh, too. So technically, in my family, 
we have a lot of Andres and stuff like that, like Andes and whatever, whatever, because, uh, well, people were weird back then. Yeah. And uh, when I was named Andrew, my grandma was like, oh, you're naming him after, like, family. And my mom was like, no, absolutely not. His name is Andrew. Don't call him anything else. <laughs> Just and, call him Andrew. <laughs> yeah. But uh, then I started being called Marcus. I didn't know my name was Marcus until I was kindergarten. Really? Yeah. So the... <laughs> Uh, to be Ms. honest, shout out Miss Martinez. Miss Martinez was like, "Oh, how does a uh, Marcus feel about something?" I can't remember what the hell it was. But I looked at my mom and was like, "Who the hell is Marcus? <laughs> who who, that? who is that? Who is that?" I'm gonna be honest. I don't. Your middle name was never brought up, honestly. Really? Never. Like Andrew. I'm gonna be honest. Andrew up until like sixth grade never had a middle name. That's, Andrew is my middle name. What are you talking about? I know it is. I know it is now, but it's like that was never brought yeah, up. Even Alex didn't know his own brother's middle name. <laughs> For a Alex fat bit, I didn't know my middle name was Carlos. Grade. <laughs> For a little bit. Because <laughs> a lot of the papers that everybody would use in school would always have C and not Carlos. Oh. So it's probably till like third grade, I'd be like, oh, huh. I finally clicked with me. I'm like, oh, I have a actual name there, not just a C. <laughs> because I always got confused because my mom's middle name is literally just F. L, yeah. Or L, L, yeah, it's L. Oh, really? Yeah, it's literally just L. All of her siblings' letters, middle names, are all just letters. That kind of goes hard, yeah. though. That's kind of weird. L? No, no, I guess not L. And in the, 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 the current socioeconomic <laughs> compliant maybe, of the internet, L is not maybe, a good Maybe if you had name. W. <laughs> Dude, that'd go hard. W is a middle name? Lydia or Lydian? No. Or just, if just anything, L. the L probably is for Letty. No, it means Lopez. Letty. Oh, that's right. Lopez. No, never mind. I'll take it. It's a middle name from. Uh, okay. Yeah, that from. from no, nah, it's. So Lopez is my grandma's maiden name. Okay. So yeah. So right. they just put L for the middle name. Okay. And I don't know That's the rest. Cool. That's cool. No, this is weird. Middle names are weird. Family lineage, right. family names, strange stuff. Yep. It is. Anyways, camping stories. Do you have any that you guys want to share first, or should I go first? I think one? you should go first. You brought it up. So I'll, I'll set the tone. So my camping story goes back to when I was about. I think I like. I really love telling the story because it's just stupid what happens throughout the whole thing i think i was about eight or nine i'd have to say and this was probably the last time i went camping until sophomore year you went camping sophomore year well i guess sophomore going into junior year but that uh -huh. doesn't matter so it was, it was quite a it was like five years before i went camping again and uh, on this trip well what we usually do when uh our family would go camping is we had this trail over where we like our campsites at where it walks around a huge lake and it's just goes all the way around just a really nice trail to walk along but kind of kind of hazardous if you don't know what you're doing or if you're intoxicated but most of the time everybody's uh they're pretty okay on the trail so we had like a march of the penguins type of family hike around the lake where every single member of the family took this walk <laughs> except for I my mom my, and my sister and uh so leading this march of the penguins was colby was and like um like jurassic park too <laughs> yeah, it's like jurassic park too <laughs> when uh, they all out. when they all get lost in the uh the forest on jurassic park 2 if you haven't seen that watch that movie so you'll you'll understand these references that we're about to make so we're on this trail and leading this trail is Colby, two, three of my cousins, and my niece Mariah, who's a year older than me, so she's probably about nine or ten at this time. And right behind Mariah was myself and three of my other cousins who were, they're four, four years younger, and I think the youngest one is about five years younger than me. And we're taking this trail and we're all stuck, we're all sticking together. Uh, cause it's like a pretty, it's pretty much shaped like a rectangle as you're walking. A rectangle lake or river? Like rectangle trail. Okay. Okay. A rectangle okay. river. I was, still, I was still thinking of the lake. I was like, you guys were walking around the, the body of water. I was like, this is like, it, it goes around the body. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. It, it goes around the water. So th this, this trail is like a rectangle. Mm -hmm. And so we're going across the, the first turn and uh, we're, we're pretty much, pretty much everything's going good. Ah, damn. Every person behind me and the, the younger cousins, they stayed behind a little bit, I think, to wait for, like, the older people mm -hmm. to catch up or something for everybody else to get ready. So me and Colby's troop uh, went on ahead, and things are going fine. 
going towards uh, the first turn, and me and the little cousins are all having fun. I'm joking with them. And then we make the first turn, and Colby and them are just gone. I have no idea what happened to them. And I'm like, that's okay. Care to explain yourself? That's okay. <laughs> we're, we're, we'll, 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 we'll find out later, I guess. So <laughs> I'm like, that's okay. We have people behind us. And I turn around, there's nobody behind us. So it's just eight-year-old Caleb with a bunch of five and four-year-olds. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, guys. <laughs> One of us is going to die, <laughs> and it's not me. I'm like, it's okay, guys. We'll just catch up with Colby and them, and everything's going to be fine. Wasn't Candace next to you? No, Candace stayed at the camp with mom. because she was with us because no, she, she was, got mad at me. She was pregnant with uh, Cassius at the time, so she didn't go on the trail. When was... Th- I think me and... Uh, I was with uh, Taylor and Charlie. Yeah, you, you were with uh, Grandma and Grandpa and them, so... my. Taylor. My dad was way far behind, so it was just me and these kids, no idea where the troop ahead of us went, no idea where the troop behind us, when they're even coming, so we're like, we're just going to catch up with those ahead of us. I forgot to mention my brother, oh, you my, want me that? My, uh, my brother Cliff is with uh, the troop on the, with Colby's troop, so we, we just decide, oh, we're just going to catch up with those guys and everything's going to be fine. Upon making this first turn after losing everybody... We're marching a little ways. The kids are starting to get scared. I'm like, guys, it's going to be fine. We're just going to catch up. And I look down on the trail that we're marching on. There's demons. Dead center in the trail is a pile of what I was pretty sure in my eight-year-old mind, and I'm pretty sure now, was bear poop. Just filled with seeds. You can tell it's something that likes eating a lot of berries. It's just a pretty big mound of poop. And I turn around to the kids, and I'm like, guys, do you think this is bear poop? <laughs> and uh, one of my little cousins who is with me, he, he, he knows a lot about nature, so he's like, I think that's bear poop, yeah. And then the other one who's about the same age as him was like, she was scared out of her mind of being alone. And we had this other little cousin who's way younger than all three of us, and he's just like quiet the whole time with big eyes, just like, where's my mom? <laughs> So I'm like, all right, guys, we're just gonna keep marching forward, and eventually we'll catch up. Are you the sure troop. it was? Have you ever looked back into well, the story? You're gonna find out soon that I, it was pretty much confirmed that this was bear poop. So, hello. Anyways, we're going, bro. so we're going forward down this trail, and eventually, after a while of the kids being afraid and me playing leader role, mm-hmm. we meet up with my brother Cliff, and. Me and my child mind was like, yes, finally, a responsible adult that can take care of this children squad so I don't have to be responsible anymore. But looking back on it, what he was doing at the time that we found him was quite possibly the dumbest thing he could have possibly been doing. (laughs) He, the responsible adult, was hanging over a cliffside trying to pick raspberries Hanging by a branch, the weakest looking branch on a cliffside, picking raspberries. And he's like, yeah, don't worry, Caleb. Everything's going to be fine. (laughs) And looking back, I'm like, what the heck would have happened if he just fell off the cliff right then? Like, what the heck would we do? We're just a a troop of kids. One of them about to pee their pants. I'm sure all of them would have pooped their pants right then if he fell off that cliff. Cliff falling off the cliff. Wouldn't that have been ironic? <laughs> but that Put didn't that on happen. The gravestone. <laughs> cliff fell off a cliff. Jeez. But if you if you talk about it with, with him now, he's like, yeah, that was dumb. That was pretty <laughs> dumb of me. <laughs> it's just so funny. But he didn't fall off. So he eventually leads us to the rest of the troop where it becomes like uh, Jurassic Park 2 where they're all taking a rest stop and we're waiting for everybody else to come along. And uh, eventually everybody catches up. And one of my uh, crewmates peed their pants and got the beating of a lifetime from their parent. And uh, For what? Peeing his for, pants? For peeing their pants. He was scared and alone? You <laughs> and Punishment. <laughs> okay. You didn't give a good reason? What, what is he there to defend him? Why'd you pee yourself? Uh, I don't know. I was alone with Caleb. <laughs> yeah, Caleb alone. Started, started fear uh, <laughs> fear talking me. I think there's a bear around. But <laughs> I'm going to proceed to beat you for fear. Well, look, okay. But what were they supposed to do? Beat me? I was. <laughs> or at least scold you. Really? You're going to get them all scared in a trail? I was eight. 
I was eight. <laughs> I was eight. That's my excuse. I was eight. And the responsible adults left me and were trying to tr- pick raspberries off the side of a cliff. So anyways, everyone's resting up. And my cousin Isaac, this is where it starts to become like Jurassic Park 2. He uh, decides to go off ahead to take a pee. Mm-hmm. And we're pretty much waiting for him to get back. And we're talking like uh, if it was like Jurassic World or Jurassic Park that he goes off and gets killed. And the guy he told that uh, he went to go pee just didn't oh, hear him okay. and he never comes back. Yeah. We say the guy who was listening to music didn't hear him was my cousin Chris just <laughs> sitting there listening happy, listening to his... <laughs> yeah, he, like, he had a huge backpack just like the guy in the movie. <laughs> Just like the just like the movie, except lo- except Isaac came back from his pee, but with news that uh, there was a bear and her cub ahead of us on the trail. Isaac was with you? No, we we caught up with you guys. Oh, that's, this is like the, way at the end. Yeah, this is this is like the middle of the trail where we finally caught up with you guys. So the whole troop's together, but we encounter a bear, and my cousin Joshua, who's about two years older than me. Decides to go off and run and fight the bear. Well, he <laughs> that, wanted to, like a closer look. Yeah, he. I guess he wanted to get a closer look on this mother. I was. I was doing. I was like the, the trailblazer, I guess, going up ahead and looking ahead, and then like it was fine all the way ahead, and then at the very end, I was like, "There's a bear," and everyone's like, "What?" I was like, "What? What do we do? Do we like?" We have to tell everyone in the back, and then Joshua just like jumped up and ran. He's like, "Where's the bear?" Where's like, the Joshua, bear? No. He, the, this ten-year-old wanted to go <laughs> look this directly. This man wanted to play Pokemon. <laughs> he wanted to play Pokemon with uh, mother bear and her cub in it peak wasn't, hibernation. Wasn't just one that I saw. They, they, uh, the story I always heard is that it was a mother and a cub. So this saw, is this I is confirmed. There was a bear actually on the trail. There, there was a bear on the trail. Ah, a bunch of children were left alone on a trail where there was a I, indeed I a bear. That was, was way far back. He, with very, me. very tell and Charlie with uh, the grandparents. So wait, was this this information of about a bear was not relayed to everybody it, it was afterwards? Relayed, it was relayed once we were all together. So so, so back to the, back to the child <laughs> getting beaten. That wasn't brought up beforehand or afterwards during this uh, regrouping of the group. Well, this, this is the first time I heard about the beating. It was separate. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, t- I tell you, this, uh, where we go camping is out towards Republic. Mm-hmm. You know, it's about 120 miles mm-hmm. up north. Mm-hmm. And we go over, it's, it's called Long Lake and Fish Lake. Mm-hmm. Okay? Long Lake is a big lake, and they got a trail that goes all the way around. It's, I mean, it's pretty, pretty treacherous. You got to mm-hmm. be really careful. Yeah, well, we're we're about to find out a- after the bear story what how treacherous it is. It is. It's pretty treacherous. Okay? Mm-hmm. So you're going around there, so... You know, you're climbing over boulders, mm. over this old trail. Mm. And, and, I mean, you got trees, and, and you got water on both sides. And you're going, or I want to say you're heading west, then you got the water, the lake on, on your on your right, mm-hmm. and all these boulders and forests, so you make that turn, mm-hmm. and then you're going back around again. Mm. Now you got the water. You know, mm. Same thing, you go, you go in a circle. You know, and and, and my mom and dad, they, they wanted to make that, make that, mm-hmm. make that hike, you know, I give them respect for that for their age that they want to do it so i had to stay behind with them mm. well the rest of these guys these clowns all <laughs> i'm a clown for being eight years old following my older brother yes well, anyway, i so thought my job was just to trailblaze and look ahead for <laughs> clearly there was a difference of ideas here one was like all right we'll have a nice day you wherever this one <laughs> all right i'm looking for the head of the group there was clearly not that, a organization at the head of the group. here. It was, it was not. It, a no, no, and uh, also discrepancy up a, in my six people, up in the very front. There, I was like, guys, we should probably wait for the other guys to catch up. No, we gotta go up ahead, all of them. So I was like outnumbered, and I was like, we should probably wait for them. So Colby was the reasonable so one. Colby here. was the reasonable one. He was Ian Malcolm in this situation. <laughs> no, well, there were there were uh, older uh, teens. Mm. There were older. Well, girls. just add, teens. just add. Uh, nine years to eight, so yeah, that's how. I, I, I remember. Corey's like well, we seventeen. Got, we got we got divide different groups. You had the the teens, <laughs> the elder ones. The teens in the front, either, the children in the, the middle, front, the elderly in the back. The, in the middle. Oh my god. The, the, the very smart way to to put everyone: the teens in the front, leaving everyone, and then the very young children by themselves, right behind them, to get lost <laughs> wherever. That's what I just think. Remember the group? Of, it was me, Isaac. It was you, Isaac, Chris, Mariah, Mariah and Joshua. Chris was like way in the back. No, Chris was with you. It was 
me, Chris, or me, Isaac. This is just the oh, the and press Cliff. Story Cliff was with you. Well, let's move forward. On he's, this no, no, no. he's like it, in the middle of us and you guys. So, somehow we didn't run into Cliff until the very point that he was trying to kill himself. <laughs> I, I guess you guys but, are uh, trying to kill himself. But pretty much, we somehow got past the bear. We we get past the bear, our whole troop safe it, past it the bear. He got scared off when Joshua oh. jumped out. <laughs> Joshua jumped Joshua's, out. Was like Joshua can it. scare bear. Joshua confirmed. scared no. the bear. I was like, okay, I guess that Luckily, works. Luckily, the bear fled. The bear escaped battle unharmed. Jeez. <laughs> but, <laughs> but so we're, we're continuing on this trail. My pr- my pretty much my adventure on this trail is over. But the treachery does not uh, end there because we there's a rock pass that we have to go across with a lot of very flimsy rocks like one wrong step and you could go tumbling down into this uh lake probably to your death and uh, so you land. Col- colby <laughs> colby and his troop or colby himself decides to parkour across the rocks what are you spider-man he, he's a okay, pretty he's a pretty thing, hold on hold on hold on <laughs> he's a pretty nimble guy so he could make that parkour and my niece mariah trying to be like him the most clumsy person in this entire troop all the way the clumsiest person leading Come all on. the way back to the even the elderly she's that clumsy my grandparents wouldn't fall and she would probably fall she decides to parkour like colby and literally almost leaps off the cliff to her death and isaac has to catch her like spider-man thwip catcher and stop her from falling to her death off the cliff can you confirm this colby that is true he did catch it i don't know if she was like i, I heard that she said she was like tilting and isaac caught her from what i heard she was trying to parkour she wait, was wait, trying wait, was to parkour because she, she was playing. Uh, she was playing. Oh, okay. She was playing Assassin's Creed at the time a lot, so she really <laughs> thought she was an assassin and tried to parkour across Assassin's these Assassin's Creed Three has done damage to her. It, it really did damage to her because she really thought she could do it and almost fell off the cliff. Well, so we almost lost two people to the cliff on that trip. Three. What's well, the there third? Was the third? Wasn't there uh, Michael? Wasn't he? Wasn't those their group in the way back? They're jumping into the lake. No, that that was that's a that's a way later camping trip, when those when those guys because my uh, little Mikey and them were uh, suckling with their parents the whole time, not having to face the wilderness by themselves like me and the rest of the kids. Well, there you go. Apparently, Caleb got that, some wild stories. Yeah, I got lost in the forest with the. It, it's pretty much like a. One of those kids' movies where the kids get lost. Milo in the Notice or whatever. Uh, Milo <laughs> Notice, <laughs> isn't it? Basically, right. If I remember I, the plot of the movie, uh, they got I lost. guess. But we're, we're none of us were cats. Is it's, Benji? It's, it's, the, the campsite is surrounded by steep hills. Mm. It's just basically a circle. Yeah. It's right? a circle. Yeah. Okay. It's like a circle. But uh, it's like oval, yes. this mm. is us kids' first time going on this trail, so we're like, like we we could see any trail off because there's like little gaps in w- that lead off the trail and we're like oh, maybe they went this way but i i, I followed the trail candace stayed behind with mom because no, i remember she she was really mad no. that mariah almost fell off the cliff and that we got ditched no me and candace were with a uh, grandma grandpa oh, did, we did we she were, go on the trail yeah, then we were telling charlie it was well i do remember she got really mad time. that uh i got ditched and mariah almost killed herself wild I don't think you were exactly ditched. Like when when I'd ask <coughs> the people in the back, because uh, then I turn well, the, around. Well, the tail always, end was Mariah. But I temporarily I turn around and say, "Is everyone? You, do you see everyone? Still? Is everyone alive?" Like, it'd be those guys would turn back and be like, "Yeah, we see them." <laughs> no, you sorry. got a head count? Yeah, well, clearly, clearly, uh, yeah, sure. they were wrong at some point because there was nobody ahead of us <laughs> and nobody behind us. Wild. We only stopped at way past the bend where we saw Cliff, and you guys were way ahead of Cliff. Well, there you well, go. What happened? How did it? I was Cliff that gap. He's trying to big bend. I, I just want to know what Cliff's reasoning for what his logic was behind hanging off the cliff by a very flimsy branch to try to get raspberries of all things. Uh, who, knows? who knows? He really wanted those wild raspberries, uh, even if it cost Are him his life. Are wild raspberries even good? 
Well, apparently that good if you was about to fall into this, his death. I want you to know that's your, that's, your, that's your brother's NPC story right there, bro. <laughs> this is NPC I was about story. to be Arthur, Arthur Morgan walking up to him and saying, hello there, sir. Or like, hey, hey partner. Mister, hey, partner. And he like, he accidentally like falls off the cliff. Hey, hey mister. Ah! Yeah, the horse, the, the horse in game, whatever. If they're trying to shine, not shine their shoes, like un, uh, clean their shoes off. And if you say hi to him, the horse will just and they, they get scared. And the- <laughs> it's so dumb. That, that was Cliff. And then we see our uh, our morality uh the morality down. Down. <laughs> It's so dumb. I only said hi. Well, I, was, I thought I was being nice. Yeah, apparently yeah, that's, that's a that's an active thing in the horse community. You gotta be careful. They just die? No, well, you know, horses just know Oh, they they go crazy kick, kicking back. Yeah. It's wild. But yeah, that's that's my story of how I got lost in the forest as a mere child with other children who were more afraid than I. So are we just going in a circle, or is it going to the Prez's next? I guess whoever wants to tell their next story, if you, if you I, have well, a story. The only time I remember from that one camping trip is that I had insane fishing luck. Ooh. That's about it. Because my dad, I remember it was my dad trying to teach me uh, how to fish, you know, put the worm on the hook. And um, I just, cause I kept on getting fit. I don't know who was there. I think it would have been my, it would have been my dad, my Uncle Lenny. Alex was there. He's from work. I was there. There was a four, there was a fourth. I think it might have been. It might have been my uh uh my one of my neighbors. Alex Martinez. Was it Alex? No, Alex Martinez. it was Alex. Yeah, there was a lot of Alexes. There's three Alexes in this story. <laughs> and um, yeah, basically one was in, one was two were at the bottom. I was at the top with my dad. And then Lenny was somewhere off on a cliff somewhere. Yeah, I, it's always a cliff. Yeah, no, Lenny. Lenny, uh, just I guess speaking on lore here, maybe one day we'll get him on the podcast. But like, <laughs> maybe I don't know. Well, there's probably gonna be a lot of stories referring to him. But he's a he's an absolute wild man, uh-huh. and he'll just go off in random directions. <laughs> he just goes by himself. Yeah, and um, he'll he was doing something. But at the time, my dad was trying to teach me how to fish, and you know, just hook on. How were you? How old were you at this time? Had a set was I seven? You seven? So me and Alex had our groundbreaking outdoor experiences at pretty much at the same time. <laughs> yeah, and so I was, you know, I just reeled in and I just kept on grabbing stuff. And my uncles would be always give the passing comment like, "What the hell, dude? Like, how are you? How is, I got the? It, it's, it's like and I know it's a joke with the with the fishing people. It's that's like, a real thing. Luck. That's literally a real thing. Yeah, I, I get it. The seven year old was was packing, bro. I got a lot to the one point where I got so many. At one point, my dad says, "Oh, that one's small. Release it." Do you know what a seven-year-old me does without you know having the knowledge of what to properly release? You just, I literally, I, I. My dad, my dad was like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "You said throw it." My dad said to throw up. I felt bad once I realized, oh, wait, <laughs> animals, yeah. animals exist. Animals too. feel pain. Yeah, so I always kind of feel bad for that story. Take in the water. No, I I threw him. He just he. I remember him dunking in. <laughs> the fish is like concussed in the yeah. water. Like, but that, but from oh. after that, uh, the only thing after that is uh, my other Alex, uh, the big one I work with at the hospital. Uh, he taught me how to. Not, he didn't teach me. I was just watching him how to like, uh, debone a fish or whatever. Oh, so that was that was about it. And from there, the, yeah, because they have the they're the center or whatever. You actually pulled. Well, he was doing something. I don't. I can't remember if he was if he was cutting it or had a tool for whatever. But I, he was cutting it. Well, he was. I was just watching. I wasn't really learning. I was just seeing what he was <laughs> you doing. You just knew he was doing something. Yeah, and fish. it just looked interesting. And after that, I just remember eating a whole bunch of fish. And mm-hmm. after that, I just never heard of that debone. You, heard of that? you don't debone your fish. They they, they do that sometimes. Oh, yeah. the flame. That's what is. What's <clears> the <throat> accurate term? But. Um, yeah, we gutted them when we went trout fishing. Mm-hmm. That I haven't done. I have not gutted a fish. Yeah, the trout, trout, we uh, we gut them and scale them, got the heads off. Well, there might have been scaling in that story too, but I can't remember. As far as the, um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, panfish, whitefish, mm-hmm. like carp, crappie, bass, and uh, uh, perch, mm-hmm. and walleye, you, you fillet it. Mm. Other people do it some other way, but that's the way we do it. Mm. Yeah, keep the mic more towards your mouth. Oh, sorry. No, you're all good. Yeah, sorry. It's it's sorry. it's rookie stuff. We yeah, you're, with it. you're fun. Yeah. Sorry, but no, no, no you're yeah. good. You're good. It, it just makes ESPN it sound clear. Before, so. yeah. You've never been on, been on ESPN <laughs> before. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that that's basically what I've done. Um, I think Andrew basically had the same exact experience. If if anything else, I guess if if it's 
if if this is defined as camping, I guess the next story would be like where one time my grandpa. Uh, this is the only time I've ever done this, and you no, know, I'm. Eight, I think I this time I was either ten or eight. Uh, my grandpa went down to uh, Andrew. Where do where does where does grandpa get the sheep from? I think you probably know. Do you not know? Somewhere, my grandpa. My grandpa will go. I think I've been there once. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, my grandpa will go to this sheep herding place and um, he'll just, you know, grab a sheep. And the one he gro- grabbed one time was a baby because he was only feeding me, my dad, and himself. And um, while that was happening, yeah. uh, my grandpa had to put the sheep in the back with me. So it was next to my legs. I'm like, oh, there's just a baby sheep next to me. And about five, the 10 to 15 minutes later, or however I remember childly speaking, uh, my dad was like, all right, we're going to eat this now. I'm like, okay, how's the process go? Because fish are a little bit different. You can't really, you know, see the emotional distress of a fish. <laughs> and my dad proceeds to, and I remember this vividly, uh, next to the shed in the back to the left-hand side, there's how it's designed is for my grandpa's, uh, my grandpa's place in the backyard. It's, there's a, there's a shed and there's just two rock piles on the side. And on the left side, my dad proceeds to grab his knife, flick it open <laughs> He's turning away from me, but I see it. He grabs the baby sheep's neck. No. And just, I'm all like, oh, that's how I get this food. Oh, shit. And then I, my dad walks away. I don't think he notices I was, I'm behind him. And then I proceed to watch a literal uh, baby animal die in front of me. One year later, he, um, we do the same thing. Guess who has to cut the sheep's neck off? Me. <laughs> uh, to do that to an eight-year-old kid, that's kind of traumatic. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Andrew probably did, uh, experienced it a little bit differently, but I just, I just witnessed oh like this. He, he had to, he had oh, to actually no, kill like, it. Me just, me, me just seeing it, just like slowly, like no bleed way. out. I was all like, and then my dad proceeds to say, "Oh, it's done." Proceeds <laughs> to rack it up on the. There's a tree back there too on the left hand side. He proceeds to rack it up, and then he proceeds to show me. I'm like, okay, Dad, that's cool in my head. But I'm like, you know, I'm like. Huh? You're not gonna explain what happened back there. You're just, just okay. Dude, he, and he that's just about killed it. a baby. Okay. So what, what, what did your dad do with the? I mean, did he make a stew out of it? No, he, my my it? dad, my dad. When my grandpa and my dad do, uh, when they're, I guess, comboing the the dinner for that night, is my dad will usually um, he'll open it up, get all the guts out, and then my grandpa will proceed to me like, all right, now I'm gonna be. My dad prepares it. My grandpa cooks it, and he'll just uh. I think at that time, uh, he has the pit where you just, you know, you open it up and then you put on the, the four ends. And so you, you just, barbecue it. Yeah, basically. And my grandpa has a little... I think dad wants a pit too, but I can't remember. That's funny how, uh, uh, that you guys do sheep because uh, my family, which I never partook of anything like this, but my mm-hmm. on my mom's side, her uncles would do baby goats the same yeah. way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's weird. I don't... I think it's just because of the size. I remember at one time there was an actual... We, there, this I think Andrew wasn't even born yet. I might have been two or three, and this is a memory I have. Is there? Oh, lovely, <laughs> <laughs> lovely. <laughs> no, uh, but um, what is it? Is that this is an actual picture? Or no, that's what it looks like. Oh my god, I, I, have, I have someone like <laughs> yeah. on Dad's phone, but that's what it looks like. Oh, the baby, no. <laughs> yeah, basically, he, no. he he opened it up like that. <clears throat> But there, there has been a few times where there's been bigger ones, and they're in that same exact pit. And that pit is is on the right side of it, uh, if you're facing I, forward. I really like the the stark difference that you really truly felt bad for this little baby lamb watching it die. And the fish. And the well, all, the, the the fish, I guess. But uh, what it was a couple I of was, years. I was getting. I, I want you to know before that, in the car right there, it was like it was next to me. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Dude, I, I love was, it. I, I was growing <laughs> attached to it, dude, <laughs> no. and just seeing it die, bro. I was. I'm gonna be <laughs> honest. There's a part of me that says, in a life or death situation, I could, I could kill an animal. You know, out of the survival yeah, instinct. Yeah, yeah. But if I'm out here with my family again and I see that, I'm gonna be kind of like. It was sad. <laughs> be like, Damn. I'm like, no, they taste good. Yeah, but it's like the the Can disconnect. We just order burgers, <laughs> dude. Honestly, I was like, "Damn, dude." But, uh, it, it's funny because uh, two years ago, or not two years ago, it was a, it was a few years back at a family reunion. Uh, like my dad said, one of, of his, one of his uncles uh, killed a goat, uh-huh. and I remember I remember the story they're telling me that the goat got out before they're supposed to slaughter it. So they chased it like all afternoon trying to get this goat. Before they finally caught it and then killed it, 
But uh, the kids who saw it die didn't feel the same remorse that you did. They started play. So, they started playing with its uh, ripped off limbs. <laughs> like they're throwing them around. To, maybe like, I am each other normal, with them. Am I normal? <laughs> you know what the best part is about like this called chivo. Like the best part of eating that is seeing all the thias try to eat the eyeballs. <laughs> they all fight over the eyeballs. I don't know what it was, but the thias fought over the eyeballs, and I never understood why. They're absolutely disgusting. That is never, never happening. Awful. I, th- I, th- I think in that that's, same ex- that's pretty heavy. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I think in that same experience later that night, I don't know who prepared it, but my grandpa had proceeded to. I don't know the exact name of it, but my grandpa will like wrap the guts and then proceed to like bake them. Mm-hmm. And then I had that and I ate it. It, looked, it tasted pretty good from what I recall from my child memory. My dad was like, You want some? I was like, Okay, I guess. And I had some and tasted pretty good. And apparently my grandpa can basically use anything except for, you know, the intestinal tract, I think. So, so what did you guys do with the uh, the wool? I didn't have any. I think it was they were, they were already shed. You think somebody's going to sell you a sheep and be like, <laughs> I'm not going to take the wool last or first. So I think it was gone. I think it was well, basically naked. Probably make cotton candy out of it or something. Uh, oh, I don't know if that worked out. <laughs> yeah, it shaved. It was shaved. Yeah. I think... Um, me and Chris were about ten or twelve when we first killed a goat. <laughs> and it's still it's, like, it's shocking. Like you said, yeah. you're eight. Like, but it was like still pretty old. But, but it, yeah. it's <laughs> not in the that's sense that's that a like story. It, I saw it suffer. I'm like, damn, dude. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is another. So this what happened recently is that my uh, one of my Twitter friends had a uh, his cat has brought in a mouse, <laughs> and the mouse was clearly suffering because the cat was you know it was playing with its food. He's like, dude, what did I do with it? And I immediately remember what happened to the sheep. I'm like, you have to end it quick. End, end it, it quick. suffering now. <laughs> dude, I swear that, that baby goat was like, or sheep, was was out there for at least five, five three minutes just like, no. Dude, I was, I'm telling you, bro, I felt so bad. I was like, dog. That's sad. You couldn't have, and my dad was a hunter. I, at the time, I remember him, you know, doing his thing. I, he probably just didn't have a, the equipment on him, but you know, you could have just mercy killed it. But that's, that's what they did. They went in the back of the skull and they shot it. Yeah. And it like dropped and the like the blood came out and Chris was like, Billy? <laughs> the blood said, what? Is, Chris was like, Billy? <laughs> it is just like dead. He's like, Billy? Billy? <laughs> yeah, I know. It was just it was just super shocking as a kid. Maybe now it'd be a bit different because the internet has shown me a thing or two, but it's just all like also you already experienced a lot yeah, experienced, yeah, as an adult. It. Yeah. It's just all like, man, that sucks. Do we I can't get used to this stuff like that? Yeah, yeah especially that, the little little ones. That's little why ones. Uh, when the puppies would die, when Brower would have puppies, he had me bury them. He he couldn't bury them. I oh. had to bury them. I also am the one that has. To I, I was like, chickens. I was like eleven, and uh, he's like, "The puppy died. You go bury it." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, that's, that's in the in the frozen ground. Yeah, too. we had to we had to like wait for it to thaw too, so we had to leave the puppy there. I thought we got a pickaxe. We oh, yeah. did, did we get the pickaxe? Dirt, yeah. The, yeah, we, we had to this do something. This is such a depressing episode, dude. Uh, let's bring it back. Uh, uh, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't mean to make it so Thanks, dark. Thanks, Alex. All right, here's my campy uh, story. Okay, go, go. My dad has a campy this story. This so sad, dude. <laughs> anyway, so like we're t- talking about. Uh-huh. Yeah, we go camping when we're towards Republic, okay? Mm-hmm. It's always been a tr- tradition since I was a kid mm-hmm. that we, everybody climbs in the back of the truck you know, and we go, go all through all the forest, you know, the, uh, roads, mm-hmm. you know, and you see all kinds of deer and, you know, and it was kind of sad right now when I think about it, and I was a big old participant, is we had our baby guns. So as soon as we saw a chipmunk squirrel, what's up with you guys and shooting like, small I know. rodents? <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, I feel bad about We're that. in the tree where they do it. It's literally just off screen. <laughs> That's and true. The, the, tree, too. the trees where they slaughter is right here. On but anyway, so <laughs> I mean, we're always that. We're like driving around, you know, and looking at the deer and, and, you know, and stop off. And it was just like, you know, we're like, we're on a, you know, us, us kids, me and my brother, uh, you know, we were small. We were like about nine, ten, you know. And mm-hmm. We were like a safari. Hunt, okay. So it's been like that tradition for years and years. And I get, grew up, you know, got married and everything. And this one time, uh, it was my turn. I was the driver in the truck. Mm-hmm. I had my dad with me and, and Candace, you know, my daughter, my oldest daughter. Mm-hmm. She was in the middle and everybody in the back of the truck. Anyway, it's been about a baby, about five or six years before we went camping. Uh, and when I went this time, we're going down to um, to this big lake. It's called, um, oh, what's the name of that lake? Swan Lake? Swan? Swan Lake, thank you. Swan Lake. Mm-hmm. It's a big old uh, RV place and everything. 
You might like it there because it's an RV. I don't. I like to go actual camp. Glamping is cool and all, but <laughs> actual so camp. Anyway, so, I like the ground. So anyway, so we go over there and drive in. You like good idea? They everybody go swim and and come back. So I'm driving and I'm going down the road. Usually it's it's gravel, but now they improved it to where it's it's a, a pavement. You mm-hmm. know, you know it's all paved. And anyway, so out of nowhere, we're almost getting back to where we need to take a, a turn to go back to Long Lake and Fish Lake. There's a sheriff behind me. He turns on his lights. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, you know, what the heck? So I pull over. He comes up, and it's a young deputy. Mm-hmm. And he goes over there, and he says, hey, what do you think you're doing? I go, I don't know, sir. What, what am I doing What wrong? am I doing wrong here? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I hate, I hate when they ask, what are you doing? I don't know. You're the one who pulled me over, yeah, bro. Me, yeah, and I go, I, I don't know, sir. He goes, you got a bunch of people in the back of your truck, you know, not even buckled up and anything. You know, you mm. can't be doing that. You got to be pretty stupid to be doing something like that. I'm like, whoa, you know, this, you know. We've I've done this. We've done this for generations. You know what I mean. So I'm telling him. I was like, "Well, sir, I'm sorry, sir." And the whole time, this guy's this deputy's chewing my ass out. Mm-hmm. My dad's over there, just like he's like that dog on the what they call wacky races. Mm-hmm. My dad is laughing. He thinks it's funny. He's, he's just laughing. You know, he got pretty. He just guys just chewing my ass out, and I hear my dad. <laughs> this yeah. stuff, right. So when he say, "Hey, I'm sorry, sir," you know, we're, I told him, "Hey, we're just you know." Right there, like about maybe about twenty feet to make that turn. We're just over here. We're camping. We're going over that way. And it goes all right. Well, I don't want to see you on the road again. And, you know this and that. And I said, okay. So we all turn. You know, he lets us go. So anyway, so there was kind of like a um, not a fire ban, but it was like a, a, a high alert because mm-hmm. kind of, it was really dry and they had some forest fires out there. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so everybody had their campfires pretty low. Well, the campsite I was in, um, I had, my fire was really small. Mm-hmm. Right, so. I grabbed this, uh, there was no wood, no bark, you know. So I, I grabbed this, uh, and that, that branches. Mm-hmm. So I grabbed this bark. Apparently, I didn't know it was really rich with oil. Mm-hmm. So I grabbed the oil, you know, bark, and I threw it on there. And it just, like, <laughs> took off because the oil, and I was like, oh, my Until, like, God. These, these branches. Oh, yeah, it went high, <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, you know what? You know what happened? You know, what's Water. On here? <laughs> oh, it's yeah. an oil fire. Never mind. I take it back. <laughs> sit there, and I'm just, you know, we just, you know, just like, oh, my gosh. And sure enough, here it comes. Lights turn God on. damn! It. Here he comes again, <laughs> Mister Dippy Dog. So I just, dude, how did, okay, I'm not saying a road, but why is it always the worst time they show up? <laughs> is that is that not just like it was literally? We were camping this whole time. It's never the fire was never high. And yeah, just as soon as he threw it, like the guy was coming by. <laughs> Come by, and he comes over there and he says, "What are you, you guys doing, bro? I just put it down, dog. I didn't even know." No, that's what he said. He comes up and he says, you got to be really stupid. Here we go again. Man. <laughs> doing this. And I was like, and he saw me and he was like, oh, you. And I was like. God damn it. I was like, oh, man, come on. What is the chance? Within a, a half hour, this guy's chewing me out mm-hmm. again. You know, and I was like, you know, hey, officer, I'm sorry. You know, you got it. You know, he just chewed my ass out. Was it I'm like, like there's a piece of bark like nearby? It was right there. And it, it, yeah, nearby. Oh. Right there. Did you never point it out to him? Like, no, I just grabbed it from the pile not even five seconds ago. Yeah. Anyway, so that was my. <laughs> Who's the idiot? Yeah, that's that's Who's the idiot? Story. Who's the idiot? You got to be pretty still. Yeah, he chewed my ass out. Good thing my dad wasn't there because he had a good snickering. chuckle. But, uh, like, pretty much now that's the, that's the running joke in the family. Anytime, like, something happens, my dad comes out and he's like, Who's the idiot? <laughs> Just because be that stupid. one moment. You gotta be pretty but, stupid. Which made it very funny uh, when, what that have to be like 30 years later that I start the whole field on fire and all the fire department comes and everyone in the family was just kind of like, they, they all thought in unison looking at my dad like, what if by chance that that <laughs> deputy <laughs> that saw him all these years ago got promoted to like sheriff or something, <laughs> sees my dad and goes, who's he? <laughs> you again! <laughs> yeah, you again. That yeah. was just, that actually be comedy, dude. Uh, it, 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 uh, full circle. Pure comedy. But uh, uh, my, what my mom has thought... Uh, recently is she thinks that deputy was a guy who's running for uh governor for washington mm-hmm. last year lame. So there you go you're lame he for telling my the dad sheriff for the republic right yeah he's the a republic sheriff right? for republic so it could have he could have been the very same guy the who's the idiot guy <laughs> Or I'd rather take an ass chew and then a ticket because <laughs> <laughs> that's wild bro yeah 
Gosh, I love that story so much. Because, <laughs> of course, Grandpa's really laying it on you laughing. <laughs> he brings it up every once in a while. Hey, that, he hey, go, remember when that, what that deputy tell you? He always asked me. I'm going to be honest. I don't have any stories like that with my dad. As of now, my dad's never, I've never been in a moment where I think, where he's never been like, oh, look at my son. Something's happening to my son where I just have to watch. <laughs> Usually it's just me. I'll, like, I don't know. I won't pick something up right. And my dad will scream at me. He'll be like, what are you doing, you idiot? I'm all like, I don't know. I was picking up this rock because it seemed pretty rocky. I just, I don't know. I look, <laughs> it looks pretty, pretty fun. Rocky. I, I haven't had a moment like that. I don't know if Andrew does, but, you know. Oh yeah, every day, yeah. <laughs> every day, every day. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, maybe it's maybe it's different from me and Andrew's perspectives, but I've never had a moment where I'm like you know getting chewed. I'm gonna be honest. I'm pretty. I'm. I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm not Red Dead example again. I'm not Arthur Morgan walking into a bar, uh, proceeds to uh, antagonize somebody with their options, getting into a fist fight. I'm usually you know walking into the bar, getting a drink, and then leaving. And then proceeding to, uh, proceeding to play poker or something. That's usually what I'm doing. My dad just is very unfortunate. Like, things just somehow find a way to go wrong, even though he's not really doing anything that should be wrong. Yeah, it's just... Luck's a, Luck's a funny thing, honestly. It really is. Colby, do you have any camp stories now? Don't so, go dark like I did. I don't want to <laughs> go back to that place. It might be a, uh, It's not too bad. But like they were saying, we always camp at Republic. Like for almost thirty years, I've been going there, and it's just like you're that old. I'm 29. He's 29. <laughs> yeah, Colby's Colby's old. He might have the youthful appearance of a 25 year old. Like he's almost 30. <laughs> he was getting hit on on the episode that uh, he was first introduced on. With who? Remember, you sent me the the text. Remember? <gasps> oh. Oh, that's right. Jen's probably watching this. Jen was hitting on you, by the way. <laughs> Jen. Uh, she thought you were you handsome. Out, Jen. Hi, Jen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> send, me, send me this clip afterwards. I'm going to send it to her. All right, so what's up Hi, your Jen. story? Yeah, what's your story? So, um, yeah, about 10 years in of camping in that same spot, it's just the same thing, you know. I, and I'm a person that gets bored of doing the same thing. And, you know, we just keep catching frogs and then releasing them, catching snakes, releasing them, walking the lake. What kind of snakes are around here, though? Uh, around here? Just gardener. Yeah. Oh, we got... Non-poisonous. You got non-poisonous. Let's go head up more north about five miles to get rattlesnakes. So. Mm. Okay, we got usually got guards. I haven't seen a snake here in a long time. That we had one. By my window. Yeah, so I guess it's... Hold on, not to interrupt, but uh, there was one time a snake in the backyard. Uh, the backyard? Uh, yeah, this was like a couple months ago. My, oh. my dad pointed it out. My mom was like, oh, my God, there's a snake in the backyard. Snake. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's just it looks like a gardener snake. Guess what my dad proceeds to do? I'm just going to let you take a guess. Just get murdered. Grabs it. the shovel, proceeds to decapitate it. Before he you you want to get here? He, go, he, goes, he, he goes, King Cobra, most dangerous snake in the world. That's what he starts saying, and then he chops his head off with a freaking shovel. And I'm going I'm, I'm to be honest. <laughs> I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm, I'm standing next to him. I'm like, wait a minute. Why are you killing it? It's just a garden snake. I'm like, Dad. It kills mice. That's what that's I know. I know. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest. In the moment, I wasn't scolding him for it, but. I'm older now. I think I might. You're older by two months now. I know. No, I might have been. It might have been 18 or 19. I can't remember. But I'm like, if I'm seeing like a garden steak, I know what animals are around me. I've watched enough National Geographic to tell me what animal's gonna kill me or not. If it's a garden steak, I'm just gonna let it be. Or maybe I might scare my kids. Oh, look at a snake. <laughs> But it's still like it's not gonna like, hurt you, King Cobra. <laughs> Dude, my dad, my dad was my dad was raised by older Mexicans, and they're just they're just wild. Older Mexicans are just actually that's, first generation Mexicans are insane. That's I'm true. just gonna my, say that. If it would have been, that's the truth. Yeah, they, they, he would have eaten it. Yeah. Oh yeah. My, my, I think my grandpa, my grandpa would have. My my grandpa has some that's crazy story. stories yeah, 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 continue about. Continue, Colby. Sorry for interrupting. Okay, so like I get bored doing the same thing. Uh -huh. Ten years in. Uh, so I just start exploring. Like, I keep going. I look beyond the, the lake. So me and Chris, that guy, you know, I was supposed to be named Christian. The Chris. troublesome uh, two. Yep. And it was just us at this time. We decided to climb. It's a huge cliff, a rocky cliff. Mm -hmm. And we climb up it. And, like, midway through, like, first we're just like, eh, you know, we're climbing. We're, it's fine. 
Midway through, we kind of looked down. We're like, uh-oh. Uh, we can die. <laughs> we can die. And, like, I did. Like, I, I slipped, and I was like, Chris was already up there. He grabbed my hand, helped me up. I probably could have died. Oh, wow. It was, it was, it was dark. pretty crazy, yeah. yeah. And I Real think, steep. It's I think, yeah. Cliff, so where we go camping, and like, I mean, it's And, like, it's I steep. was climbing, mm-hmm. and I kicked a rock, like a pretty big boulder. And it's like, <laughs> A boulder sized boulder. <laughs> that tweet. Boulder sized boulder. boulder sized. But uh I think that that uh occurrence happened the year before I got ditched. So yeah, clearly Colby right. didn't no, gain any no, I about, knowledge. I was about fourteen. 13. Oh, so it was a few years before that then. And then after that, um again I was going beyond the lake. <laughs> Most I just almost got killed every time I'd do that. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> but that was the fun part. I'm still I'm telling you guys this. Yeah, story. it's no camping stories are fun. But I don't I don't really have anything else after this. Me and Ezra have pretty lived a comfortable white life. <laughs> Third generation Mexican <laughs> life. So yeah, last time uh we went camping, I did did we climb that same cliff or did we go on a that different one? That was a different one. The one Okay. The, me and Chris did Is your dad about to go in. grab some Modelo right now? I think he's about to use the bathroom. When you first oh, okay. go into the lake, and there's that huge, steep... Dude, I'm going to be honest. Is that, is, that, is, is that chocolate melted? No. No. Is it it's good. Okay. Do we have long enough sticks to... to yeah, sticky? They, they're all right there. Okay. All right. Uh, the, uh, yeah. No, uh, are you done? Are you what came to a point, I think, when Isaac started getting bored, too, so it was a three... Yeah. Well, it wasn't Chris anymore. It was me and Isaac exploring around. But there's That's a lot of crazy cold. stuff. Like we, there's like a huge. You saw it too, just recently. Yeah, isn't Caleb it? Went, isn't it like a huge building out there? There's a building, and then there's like a pit, like a where oh. something was sitting there. Yeah, it's super weird. You know? Okay, okay. And it overlooks the whole lake. But uh, what what's really funny was uh, last time we went, uh, we like. We were pretty much traversing way off trail. We climbed the whole mountain. I feel like Wolverine with us. We climbed the whole thing and started going off, like, just way off trail. And me and Colby somehow ended up in, like, a bramble, bramble blast. <laughs> What's a bramble? Like a sticker bush. Yeah, sticker bush. What's a sticker bush? A bush with pokies. Oh, <laughs> Stat- oh you mean a thorn? Okay. A no. thorn bush. Yeah, yeah. okay. It, it, was, it was just sticker bush symphony out there. We were literally... And it Going was like thorns. it was deceiving. Oh, I do. I do have another camping story. Because it looked like it was only like this high, about a foot high. But then when you go down, it's actually like five feet of it, that bush. And what, what was worse is I I took off my shirt too, so I was going through these thorns. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I like got to the top of the mountain, and there's like a tree that was burned down, and I grabbed its like uh, coal embers, and I just rubbed it all over myself. And then I proceeded to regret that after I got stabbed by every single bramble that we went through. <laughs> really? Yeah. So, I was, but by the end of that camping trip, I was uh, marked up and bloody. Oh, what happened to the props? Oh, Andrew got hungry. Eating the props. first stuff. What happened to the stuff? The camera guy is eating the props. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. But that's most of my camping trips is just exploring and almost okay. Hungry. So not to not to cut the subject in half, but I've been playing a lot of Red Dead, and in Red Dead there's a lot of you know. Red, De- ro- Red Dead is Alex's camping. <laughs> so far, yeah, um, <laughs> it's the closest thing I'll ever experience, unless I get my uncles to. They 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 probably. <laughs> you good, Andrew? Oh, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> it's break dancing. Catch a little bit. There you go. But uh, I've been I've been lot, in a lot of Red Dead, so of course you're not gonna get it. But because you're an older guy, you don't play video he, games. He watches westerns. So okay, he actually knows Red Dead. Oh, well, really? He did. He yeah, did I, I, know Red Dead. Oh, really? When it I came out, I used to play it out there when it first came out there. Oh, okay. And uh, he was played. He played at work. He shouldn't have, but oh. played at work. So okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> wild stories uh, is that in in Rockstar games, uh, I don't know. They're it's kind of a weird trend with Rockstar to put like really weird like mystery Easter eggs. Like there's yeah. a lot of like Bigfoot aliens murder mysteries. In those uh, in those stories, and you know, we're at a campfire. I think it's. I've always, every once in a while, on the podcast, I'll be like, "What's your spooky story?" or whatever. Ooh. Surprisingly enough, I think Red Dead Two has more, a uh, spooky Easter eggs because I, I I've been I've been recently redoing my you know uh, re- uh, my replay of it, and this time my first time when I played it on the PlayStation Four, I, I, butchered through the game. I did n- I did nothing but play the story. 
and maybe did a few side quests. But this time, I'm, you know, I'm actually hunting and fishing. I mean, like, wow, they put a lot more detail in this game than they really should have. But I'm totally fine with this. Mm -hmm. And I've discovered some of the, like, you know, the the occult things. I was, uh, yeah, there's a weird stuff in it. Uh, the, I was uh, I was up in the mountains one time doing a quest to fight some bandito. I it was basically like a dual quest, and I beat him. And I'm going down the mountain, and I'm all like, "Hmm, that's a weird spot to put a house." I walk into the house. Oh, there's just corpses in here and a and a skeleton witch woman. Huh, that's interesting. Anyway, and I just moved on. Did uh, you see the part? Like it's on the uh, the east side, uh -huh. and it's just like you go in the middle of the woods and you just start hearing whispers. Oh, okay, no, yeah, I was in that part. I was uh, I was wondering if I was, and I stood there for a bit, and they started whispering. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm in the whisper woods now. It's scary, <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid but it's for always my life. I've always been a I guess thing about me. I guess I never really explained this in previous podcasts. It's like I like mystery stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Of course, I've explained. In, I think. But that's a game, though. I know, but the, even then, you know. Okay, so I guess this is where I can leave this. In it's still here. like it's, it still is like an experience. Yeah, it's there's a mystery to it. I know, I'd say it's like I mean, even the up real more stuff. Than, yeah, yeah, but the real stuff. That's that, that, like that, well, all of this that he's talking about is actually based on a lot of real yeah. stuff that happened back in the Wild yeah, West. That would happen. Actually, it actually well, it didn't actually happen to Alex. Yeah, yeah. I wish he was it, still I, scared. It he counts. was still afraid. <laughs> no, yeah, I walked in terror. I didn't experience this. There was pee pee in Alex's pants, so it counts. Okay. Not <laughs> I was in my gaming chair, bro. <laughs> Why? But that's still fear. fear. Yeah, yeah you, fear is fear. If your pants are wet, you are afraid. I mean, my pants were not wet. I, okay, <laughs> I had <laughs> shorts on and a shirt. I was gaming, bro. I had my head. I didn't have my headset on because Rockstar hasn't patched it to where my apparently the the forkishers, the stuff we're using. Apparently, you can't use it. Uh, while playing Rockstar games, you'll hear popping <laughs> and stuff. You gotta turn your your hurt rate up to like max, or it doesn't work properly. And so, like oh. for like the last couple of gaming hours, I've just been playing it through my monitors. I'm like, this is dumb. I hate this. Yeah. You, you talk about this game that you yeah. talk about, Alex. You know that uh, you uh, go out there in the forest mm -hmm. or whatever, and you see this. The weird stuff. Spooky shit. I, I, I want I okay. want to see yours because you're older. I think you've experienced he has a lot, lot more. I, there's a there one time that. Uh, and we, I was young. I was like, maybe, we, like I said, we used to go drive in the back of the mm -hmm. truck, right? Mm -hmm. We go driving out there, and we're just going through all the back of the trails. And this was Republic. Mm -hmm. We always go camping, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we were, uh, you know, I remember that we pulled up to this tree, and they had, like, these animals dangling, you know. They're like, cor like fresh corpses or skeleton corpses? Like skeleton and fresh corpses dangling off a tree. And we're, like, looking at it, we're like, Huh, we, this is weird. We had like three trucks, you know, because you know, when we go, it's like like um, seven to eight families, big mm. families, okay? So we're sitting there, we're looking at this, and they're like, Oh, there's the first I remember, moth. And I remember, I remember, <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> I remember my dad saying, You know, hey, you know, this this is not right. And uh -huh. Michael's saying, Hey, this is this is like satanic. This mm. is the Diablo. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what it was. It was like it a symbolism. Did, yeah. So, you know, we took off. So, that, I mean, what you're saying, yeah. you know, we actually saw this. Mm. Or, you know, I won't lie. I would be. I'd actually like you know in game. It's like oh shit. I would actually scared. poop and pee his pants. No, I that. would not poop and pee. I'd be like oh concern. This is not. So okay, I think about me too. Is you know maybe the the generational difference between you know mystery stories here. There's um, a lot more poop in your pants when you see that than my, oh, when my dad sees that. Yeah, I know. But like with with me, you know, I go through internet mysteries and I I hear a few things on 4chan and stuff. And um, or read stuff on 4chan and stuff, and you know they they I've heard some stories where certain corpses are hanging, really ruining the atmosphere here, guys. Okay, <laughs> we're in a forest. Yeah, you? Uh, but um, you know, you know, you know, there's it's always weird hearing creepy stories, and it's just all like, you know, there's a guy in the woods and blah blah blah. But when you have an actual like older guy, nah. This one time when I was 17 with a couple homies, there was just corpses. Hanging from trees. That, it's just really weird. I, I've never even heard that story before. You never told me that. Oh, no. Yeah, we, really? Yeah, it was, it was have you ever, do you have like a ghost story? Oh, I've got a lot of ghost stories. Really? <laughs> this is the episode I've been waiting for then. Uh, no, we're, 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 we're camping. Hold on, yeah, hold on. Speak, speak into the mic. This is the part I want people to so, know here. I think he wants to do yeah. Uh, so what? But I, I do we'll want to I do, I, I do want to continue off the, the tree. So what happened? So... Where, where was this tree at? Yeah, this public? is interesting now. Okay, where was the tree at? Yeah, we're out in the middle of God dang forest. So, so you mean, guys just, just drove off them, randomly? Yeah. I mean, you remember it driving was, through them when we were kids? So, or you were kids, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're driving out was there. Was that and different, just, though? It was more dirt. And it wasn't I mean, more 
It wasn't much of a path. Uh, no, it was, it, it, it was like... It was like off but the you, you could still find that tree today, though. I would not know where that tree is at. You know, so it was That's really right. just... Like, this is a random-ass encounter, bro. Place. That's crazy. Because, I mean, you're, you're taking this uh, road, okay? The pavement where I got chewed out, but back then, it was gravel. Mm-hmm. And then you turned off and you take the trails and it's all dirt. Like, it was old lumber trail roads. Mm. Take these roads and... We're just driving along, and everybody just, you know, everybody just wants to see the beauty mm-hmm. while we're out there with Mr. 20, 20 feet that way. <laughs> and then we just came across, and there was a tree with all these uh, corpses. These, That's these terrible. Was there, was there any signs of, like, like actual, like, pentagrams and stuff, or was it just corpses? I think there was something like that, because that's what my uncle said, that it was, that, you know. El said, Diablo. El Diablo. El Diablo. El Diablo. You know, when they had these dead things. Mm. And it, was like, it was like a shrine on mm. a tree. You know, it was like that. So, you know, I, was, I think I said I was a kid. I was a kid. Do, so. do you think you, as an adult now, because I can ask these more intelligent questions, not being a five-year-old asking adults these things, is that do you think, do you think you've you've kind of like modified the story to make it scarier than it was, or does is it still like, no, this is exactly how I remember it. Well, that's exactly how I remember because I don't have no more to say. About mm, okay, it. that's when I was a kid. It was like, you know, I was like, what what is this? You're know, seeing all this stuff. Oh. And every and, and seeing all the adults, mm-hmm. all the adults, adults, man, and, and, mm-hmm. and my mom and my aunts, you know, my uncles, they were scared. They was mm-hmm. like, like, hey, like the, okay, no, this is this is this is just the beginning. Mm-hmm. The years, it's it's you know, I've, I've seen. So I don't I don't know because me, okay, remember I'm a kid. I'm still 20. I haven't mm-hmm. heard a lot of Washington stories, but when you were raising Caleb and Colby, uh, Caleb told me the statistic is that Washington State actually has a. Compared to other states in America, a more a high cultist rate, I should say. So, as you were raising the boys and stuff, have you ever heard of stuff like that around? Like high cultist. Yeah. That? So you know, cults like that's what. Uh, like, per, yeah, because apparently um, Washington State has like a higher than average. So I don't know. It's like a passing story. Have you ever heard them? Um. No, I think because there's apparently here in Moses, there's been a couple murders. Right. Well, you so, it's, it's gangs. It's gangs here in Moses. Mm-hmm. As far as cults. I think it's more north. Yeah, I'd say I, even I, towards Seattle. I, I, I see that you know that there's there's more activity. Than mm-hmm. When I was a kid, you know, I mean, I would see it, but now through the years when I go camping, mm-hmm. I would see more with different people the way they act, and at night you would hear people, you know, walking. So you, the, wait, so can you guys can you guys vouch for this? Yeah, vouch for this? Some weird people that come out. Yeah, there is some, especially where we go no, the, where we go fishing. And, yeah, I mean, we could probably talk about that later, but our yeah. fishing spot has a lot of crazy stuff that happens. Oh, yeah, so, so apparently, the cultist thing is real, and that statistic yeah. has to be yeah. real. Then no, it's so, real. There's 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 something going on. Been, like I said, up north, because there's a lot of things that I've I've heard and seen, and so okay, no, not, especially with that cultist right behind you. No, <laughs> but uh, that but anyway, the kids. yeah, Alex, mm-hmm. let's go back to Republic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, that place where we go camping, mm-hmm. that thing is. Either scary or very beautiful. It, oh, it's beautiful! Mm-hmm. It's very beautiful. You guys got to take me out. Apparently, but, this same this place is the, is the spot. It's, it's pretty it's good. A, a lot of things that, like, um, things you can't explain. Like, um, like you know, right now you guys are going to talk about Bigfoot and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Right? Yeah, yeah. So we're we're, we're going to get direction. into Bigfoot. Yeah, I, it's on you. This okay. is. I'm asking. You're the old guy here with the stories. You're the storyteller of the, fi- of the fire. The main one. That's okay. the only really story. Uh, okay. Anyway. Uh, I only got two stories about this, okay? Mm-hmm. That uh, kind of like, you know, made me aware that this thing really exists. Mm-hmm. It does exist. Mm-hmm. Um, There's scientific there, proof, by the way. No, <laughs> later, we'll a, get that later. There's one time that uh, I, I don't. Caleb was not born yet, and I think Caleb was or Pre- Kobe was pre-see. just a pre-see. Kobe was a was a baby. But uh, me and my cousins uh, uh, back then we stayed up late that night, and we're leaving the next morning. Mm-hmm. Okay? It was like Saturday night that we stayed up late and go by the fire like we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we're, we're drinking, you know, we're having a good time. Mm-hmm. So uh, wake up and it's already like 11 o'clock and everybody's starting to pitch tents. And my cousins say, my older cousins, they're, they're like my age, you know, Danny and Andre. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're, they're about my age. And, and they say, hey, let's go. Let's go for one last trip up the hill. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like I tell you, it's a steep cliffs. Mm-hmm. Steep cliffs all the way around. It's like a bowl, that, that, you know. That's like, is is protected in. So anyway, so I was like, yeah, you know, I had a big hangover. You know, 
Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie about that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I said, yeah, you know, I'm young, you know, hey, let's, let's go do it. So they took off. We're all marching up that hill and everything. And uh, excuse me, they're way up ahead. And uh, I just, you know, I'm just like, you know, getting exhausted because I'm, you know, you're, I'm, you're climbing up a hill like this. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're climbing up the hill, going, going. At that time, they, I, they, I lost them. They were already way about halfway up the hill, and up the, and I was like, oh man, I just, I, I ain't gonna make it. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna make it. So I just sat down and I just laid on the, on the grass, and I was like, man, I just gotta get my breath. I want to get my breath, and I'm just laying there. You know, and I can't hear them no more. They, they're gone. Mm-hmm. So I'm just laying on about halfway, you know, before I finally stopped. And I'm just laying there. And I'm pretty sure they already crossed the, or the top and going across where they wanted to go, the plan. Mm-hmm. So I'm just laying there, and I was like, oh, man. You know, just laying there with my back against, you know, listening to the trees and the wind blowing. And I just closed my eyes, and I think I fell asleep for about maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I felt a pebble hit me. I was like, "What the heck? It hit me right here on the shoulder." Mm-hmm. I was like, "What?" I was like, "What?" It woke me up, and then I was like, "What the heck?" And I'm just laying there, and then I hear another pebble lay on the other lay, hit on the other side. Mm-hmm. So I was like, "Okay, well, you know what's this?" And then I'm looking, and and then another pebble hits me, and I was like, "Okay, what's this?" So what I prankster's up, doing this? <laughs> so I get up, you know, I lean forward because I'm laying down. Mm-hmm. I'm looking around, and there's nobody. It's it's a forest. You know, there's nothing. And it, but yet I'm in a in a, in a open grass, on top of the hill where I'm at. Mm-hmm. It's like like something like this. Mm-hmm. You know, this is grass where I'm at, and it's from here to here is all trees. Mm-hmm. I'm in the grass. You're just like in an open patch of it. Just a little open patch. Okay, okay, yeah, I, I get you. Fell asleep, right? Like you know, I just ran out of juice. Anyway, so then I'm just sitting there, and all of a sudden a bigger rock. <laughs> Load flies over the other side of me. Mm-hmm. I was like, "What the heck is that?" So I'm looking around, and there's nothing. I can't see nothing. And then another rock flies over. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "You know, th- okay. okay, this isn't Ooh. a prank anymore, boys." <laughs> yeah, who's throwing rocks at me? Mm-hmm. Everybody's gone. I'm by myself. There's nobody here. Mm-hmm. Ain't no squirrel throwing rocks at me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know. So I was just like, she went down the hill, and I was like, went went back with the way I came. Mm-hmm. So it it just it's kind of weird that. And uh, later on, I, I I heard in documentaries and listen to other people that have the stories mm-hmm. that they throw rocks at you. Mm-hmm. They don't want, when you're in your air, when you are in their area, they throw, throw rocks at you. That I've I've also heard. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, that was that was one thing that I always remember is like, you know, like who's throwing. Have rocks you ever at asked me? your your cousin, your brothers, and stuff like, hey, were you throwing rocks at me that day, or have you never followed up on that? No, they all took off. They all took off. They were gone. I was by myself. They all left me, so I, went, I was like back and like went back to the campsite, and they were like, "Hey, where's everybody at?" And I was like, "I don't know. There's probably still going around the around mm. like the whole thing, you know, because you know, I, you know, I I I didn't make it. Mm. I didn't make it. But anyway, so that's one thing I always remember is the rock throwing. That mm. was kind of crazy. It was the rock throwing. Do you guys have any experiences like that out there or no? Uh, are you done? Sure. Okay. Okay. So for me. As a kid, Kobe, get it, hearing, get it to your face. I want to hear. This is the good stuff right here. Always hearing his stories. You know, he's always going camping. He's like, Bigfoot's real. I'm telling you, he's out there. And I was a kid. You know, I was just like, no, he's not real. <laughs> no, this is. Dad, you're joking uh, here, bro. My, my dad like, even has a whole Bigfoot call that he, he does, does every time he, he goes camping. Call, he goes, Rrr! and it's just like loud. And I'm like, oh my it, gosh. It's, that, a cry, it's, that, a cry, <laughs> it's a cry, Alex, uh-huh. that I heard. <laughs> and this wasn't on this that time of they were throwing rocks at me. Mm-hmm. It was a couple years later that we went, and we we're in our tent, and it was like a four o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. and uh, and 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 it, uh, I mean, we got to take you there. Cause I clearly I have to go. <laughs> this is this is this is this is plot for another podcast episode somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you see the cliffs, and you'll love it. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. But on top of the cliffs, I heard this cry. Mm-hmm. Even Carmen heard it, mm-hmm. and some of the other people. You know, the other, my, my, uh, I think uh, Eloy heard it, mm-hmm. but it was like a, mm. like that. You know, it was, and I was like, "What the heck is that?" And it was on top of the top of the cliff. Mm. That's doing this. They did it about three times. I was like, "What is that?" Mm. You, know, you know, and I'm, I look out in my tent. You know, look out the the stupid window. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "What is that?" Carver's leaving too. What is that cliff? I go, "I don't know." 
But then later on, mm -hmm. you know, about 10 years later, the documentaries where they actually capture these voices mm -hmm. of, of, of these... Uh, <laughs> Someone just did it back now. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I don't think the mic's picked. Did it pick it up or no? I don't think so. No, no. it was in that direction. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, and that uh, these documentaries they they yeah. capture that sound, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's what that was. All right, so sorry, yeah. son. no, no. So good. like the that's probably like seven ish when the first kind of I guess clue to this thing appeared when we're going around the lake as always. And there's like just this stench, like something I've never smelled before. Just an awful, like wet stench, rotten, rotten, rotting kind of stench. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of just, uh, you know. Oh, it must be Caleb. It's probably like a rotting tree, you know. It wasn't born. <laughs> years <laughs> later. Ghost. <laughs> years later, we go here every year, years later. And um, every night, there's like something along the cliffs that is like running and you can hear the rocks getting kicked down and then it's it's kind of weird you know mm. i think it's like a caribou you know mm. this is how i is am there, as a is, kid, is like, there caribou in our state yeah no there, there's well elk we, th we oh. thought it, we thought it was deer mm. i was here you hear it okay sorry son, go no ahead. so um okay you, you know as a kid i grew up thinking ghosts were real and then i just kind of pass it off you know i was that's that's the kind of person I am. I think more logically. Okay, and then so you know, nights nights of going there, you hear like something always out there. Mm -hmm. You hear something always approaching the camp campsite. You know, like it's a bear. You know, you hear like heavy footsteps. That's a bear, and we kind of just, you know, like right now, if we heard it, we'd just be like staring and just be quiet. You don't, you wouldn't hear it ever walk away either. It's just like you'd hear it, mm -hmm. and then it's just apex kind of predator. Going. You know, I get it, bear, bear. Okay, and then so I think I was about twenty. To my age. Maybe eighteen, maybe around that. So this is this is post Caleb. There's Caleb somewhere. <laughs> so it's about two AM, three AM when it it's about four of us talking at the fire and I like I'm getting tired and I'm gonna head out to sleep. So we I left these other four four three people. Is Selena. I remember Alex and um I think it's vanilla. And so it's just three of them. And I leave with a flashlight and there's like, so I think they only had like one flashlight left. And when I got into the tent, I, we they, we heard over the cliffs that sound and everyone just split and like left uh, vanilla, like grabbed the flashlight and left everyone else in the dark. And so everyone was like, <laughs> so was that, that was that noise you heard? The, the whooping? <laughs> the, the whooping? Yeah, the woo. Woo! <laughs> Yeah. <I> don't <laughs> the like he loves doing that. It does. That's it. But it, that's the, that was the sound. And, uh, of course, again, I'm like, you know, maybe it's a person, you know, camping out here. They're yeah, out. There, there is a logical explanation to it, but there's I, also. I always thought it was yeah, but, like yeah, the deer Alex, or something. Yeah. Who would be up in the cliff? Yeah, just I'm yodeling. I mean, if you climb up there in the dark. You're, you're asking you're, for trouble. I get you're it. You're dead. You're dead because you're going to fall down. I, yeah, I know. I get it. But there's always that the the the, the human factor. Yeah. I've I've grown up. I've heard stories. I love hearing stuff. But you know, there's always that one incredibly stupid person. <laughs> hey, I guess not. In the, I guess not in this case. Yeah, oh, no, in this case, no. the sheriff is not here. Yeah, yeah. The there's shit. always that incredibly <laughs> dumb person that will the 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 extra pranker, as I would like to define it as, to do things. But there's, uh, to a certain point, with the story, the amount of stories I've ever heard, like online or through people like this in this kind of scenario, is that like there's always a certain commonality with it, where like it's always like it's always midnight, it's always somewhere that you're not supposed to be, and you always hear something. Mm -hmm. And clearly in this spot, clearly there's there's activity there, there's, to be afoot. So do you have one? Because apparently if there's three. I still have. I, and, one you more, one more. We can that finish. Made me okay. start to think mm -hmm. that this thing's real. So it's about 1 a.m. Everyone's in, asleep in the tent. And um, so in Republic, if you walk towards a tent, you can hear people from about 100 yards, a football field. You can hear someone coming towards you from that far away. And like, it's because there's just so much sticks, mm -hmm. you know when someone's approaching you. So my cousin next to me, in the, like next to the tent, is snoring loud, really loud. <laughs> is that Isaac? Eloy. <laughs> really loud. And, I just um, a recurring character. He always shows up. And I think I'm the only one up. Mm -hmm. 
but I start hearing heavy stones being thrown at that tent. Mm. And I'm like, like so heavy that I feel the ground shake. Mm. And I'm like, and I was listening. Like I know, I know how quiet of a walker I am and I can't walk to any tent without, I would have heard someone walk to the so tent. Do you, do you have the, uh, the, the ability to hear people's footsteps? I can, I, I'm very good at hearing. <laughs> Andrew, do you have that ability or no? Cause I can tell the difference between my mom, my dad and Andrew. But here's the thing, like, that thing that was throwing the heavy stones Mm -hmm. did not make a sound. It was just heavy stones being thrown at that tent. Solid snake. And I was like, I even got up, and I was like, I'm going to unzip my tent and, like, look. But there's, like, no reason because, like, I wouldn't have been able to see it. Mm -hmm. So that's what was really weird was something snuck all the way to the tents, was throwing heavy stones. Heavy stones to shake the ground. Mm -hmm. And then the next morning... Like, I got up, I was like, asked everyone, did you guys hear, like, s- stones being thrown? They're like, no, I didn't hear anything. I looked all over the ground, there was no stones. Mm. So I was like, that's when I was like, there's something weird there's going something on. Afoot there's, there's something afoot here. There's something weird afoot. going on. I get it. I, was gonna I, that wasn't, I, was, that's that's was not one. supposed to be punny. Uh, I was good. Alex, take it. I guess that's, I will. That was punny. I was very punny. So, do you, so apparently there was independent stories from these two that I had never told, or at least noon about. Mm-hmm. Noon? I didn't know no. his stories. Okay. So then, do you have one then? So you, I <laughs> have I heard this story before. This is, I, this is, this a, this is a Caleb story. Newell. I already know he's. I <laughs> am a Bigfoot <laughs> non-believer. Uh huh. And I have been this way my whole life. And one year, before we went camping, our local museum here in Moses Lake had a Bigfoot mm-hmm. uh, exhibit. Every all things Bigfoot. Just Bigfoot memorabilia, Bigfoot sightings, Bigfoot stories from across Washington. Merch. Bigfoot merch, yes, Bigfoot merch. And uh, Mariah was obsessed with this uh, exhibit. Mm-hmm. And it was to the point that she bought a lot of uh, supplies at this exhibit mm-hmm. to, when we went camping two weeks later to go Bigfoot hunting. Mm. And... Uh, so this was a whole plan. She bought a whole Polaroid camera and everything. She made a whole Bigfoot journal about how we're going to go, how we're going to find the Bigfoot. enthusiasm. I and love it. So I'm like, all right, Mariah, we'll go down there. We'll see if your Bigfoot is real or not. So this was after, like, I think the year after I experienced that, mm. the stones being thrown. And so I bought like a, an a, a this infrared. Is a few, this is a few years later because this was... I think this but is the, I the sophomore year. camera. I, th- I think this is the sophomore year uh, uh, when I mm. went. But that's how much I was like. There's he, something he, out he there. Bought where I bought an infrared camera, camera and everything. Camera, so mm. he he was in on this Bigfoot hunt too. Mm. And I was the only one out of our entire campsite who was like, Bigfoot's not real. Mm. There's no thing. There's no such thing as Bigfoot. So we go out there. We're in the forest finally. My troop is ready for, to go Bigfoot hunting, and we're like. We're, we're like, all right, so tonight we're going to go out with the infrared camera and we're going to go see what we can find. And Do you have a Girl Scout troop or something? Mariah was afraid. <laughs> Mariah, Mariah was, well, yeah, you're about to find out that this troop is uh, not exactly up for the challenge. Because Mariah was too scared to even go out with us to into the dark to go hunting. So it was me, Colby, and those two little cousins who were part of the troop from There's always some small the, individual the, they're, children. They they were they were part of the troop from way back when we got lost. Oh my lord, it continues. And so we're out we're out in, towards the lake mm-hmm. looking at the tree line and stuff just seeing if we can find anything out mm-hmm. there. And uh we're just scanning with the infrared light and or infrared camera. And we see two glowing eyes in the shape of a cougar on top of the mountainside. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're like on, me and Colby are like uh, Dr. Grant on Jurassic Park. We're like, don't, eh, don't make any sudden movements. And those two kids booked <laughs> it back to camp. <laughs> you dumbass. So, and like, especially with a wildcat, you don't want to run from a wildcat. That makes you look like prey. Yeah, but you- if it was way up on top of that. Well, it would be a long ways. Well, still, it, y- y- have you seen how those things uh, bound down? The, well, the thing, the thing about sides? cougars is the the North American ones. If you charge them, they get scared. Unless it's a mother with. Well, cub. yeah. If you're, oh, but yeah. if you're running away, you're prey. Yeah, yeah. So me and Colby stood our ground and just kind of watched it, and then eventually we made our way back to camp. Unless it's a leopard or a so or a jaguar. Uh, no, a cougar. 
At no, well, I'm talking about so the actual like. We we go back to South camp. American. We go back to camp though, and uh, with no Bigfoot evidence, we have zero Bigfoot evidence. Our troop has now disbanded. Tell them the whole time, the bargain you made. What was but the bargain you made to Dormammu? Uh, <laughs> Dormammu, I've come to bargain. You made a bargain to Bigfoot. Oh, that's right. So my bargain uh, to prove that Bigfoot was not real was I went into this forest and I said, Bigfoot, if you're out there, if you're real, you're going to come up to me and if you're real, you're going to eat my arm. You're going to rip oh, off my clearly arm. Clearly that's you're not gonna real. You're going to rip off my arm and eat it. <laughs> he still has both of his you limbs. Are, you, <laughs> at some point during this camping trip, you're going to come up to me. I am disrespecting your forest. I'm killing animals. I'm peeing on your trees. You're gonna are, are you are you fighting the Lorax or Bigfoot? <laughs> Well, is there is there from, a difference from, here? From the lore, it sounds like Bigfoot's about the same as the Lorex. So <laughs> I disrespected that forest. I went in there saying, Bigfoot, you're going to eat my arm. Just rip it off and eat my arm if you're That real. was the whole camping trip, though, was... Where I was supposed to be the one looking, and she's like scared. She was too to scared to go hunt, to go hunt for Bigfoot. So it was really just me and Colby hunting for and Bigfoot. Was like you won't, you <laughs> won't, you, you won't. won't my arm. Yeah, I was really yelling. I was like, Bigfoot, eat my arm. Do it. Do it, coward. Eat my arm. Beat me up. Kill me. Scared. Yeah, Don't do it. Do I was like, kill me, Bigfoot. Kill me right now. You won't. <laughs> you won't. Pussy. And uh, we, I really did this the whole camping trip. And that night, I'd have to say it was like three in the morning. Uh, everyone's gone to bed except for us and our cowards of uh, a troop of Bigfoot hunters. <laughs> and uh, we're, the fire's going down. And uh, me and Colby are the only ones with flashlights. And... Uh, those guys are all too scared to walk to their tents by themselves. So we had to give them one of our <laughs> flashlights. So one of us had to walk in the dark. Mm -hmm. And th those guys had to get led back to their campsite or their tents. And then Mariah was staying in the tent with me and Colby. And she was so afraid, she took all the blankets. So me and Colby were just shivering that whole night. She only did that, but she smushed us into the corner. <laughs> she, smushed, she smushed me and Colby in a corner So she's together. a coward and, a, and, and greedy. <laughs> she was cow cowardice and greedy. And uh, I don't remember. I don't think anything happened that night. But, so uh, your Bigfoot story's lame big, and actually Bigfoot, didn't know why I've involved Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> so out of well, all really, the noises no, here. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. Really what happened that day uh -huh. is I proved either Bigfoot's not real or he's the biggest coward on the face of this planet. He I had one of Bigfoot. I, thre this is that I threatened. <laughs> I, this is part of his character. I threatened Bigfoot in his own dojo, and he did nothing. But here's the tactical 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 again, bro. Here's the thing, though, about that was um, I think uh, is either the year before that one or a couple of years before that was the forest fires. Mm -hmm. So ever since those forest fires, like I've never had any experiences. So Bigfoot's Same. a coward. Same. Okay. Bigfoot's so, a coward. I, I agree. I agree with. Come I, back I agree that. with Colby. Ever since those forest fires that devastated all of the Republican mm -hmm. in that area, there has not. I have not heard any activity or or anything like that mm. from. So from there you go. Fire, either, fire. So there, there's three things: either Bigfoot's a coward, Bigfoot's not real, or he died in the fire, <laughs> or he lost his home <laughs> and he hasn't been able no. to get it back. Uh, he might he, be I, dead. My my reasoning is he booked over to Canada, <laughs> the whole family, and they wait. To, you wait. When everything gets back, they're going to come back. Well, if on a future I, I it. podcast episode, I'm missing an arm, you know what happened. <laughs> so, I but, guess, uh, welcome what, to one thing, <laughs> one thing truly did come out of this uh, whole ordeal, though, is we made a cartoon episode specifically based on this adventure. Based on our experience. Based on our mine and Colby's experience of me being a non-believer going out, trying to f prove that Bigfoot's not real. Uh, I'll have it linked in the description. Andrew, did you you move the, if you haven't watched all fun two times, you're no? not a true fan. Oh, it's the wind. I was about to say some spoopers just happened. The lights. Just Anyways, moved. that's my Bigfoot story. Bigfoot's not. So, me. so we're gonna get the Alex thing. So I've never had a Bigfoot experience. Uh, I've always heard stories. I've read stuff. But for the non-believers, technically and scientifically speaking, I think Caleb knows about this. I have explained it before. Is that. Using scientific uh, uh, research and evidence here, uh, at one point before the supposed uh, colonization of America, this is Native Americans, I'm not talking about the Europeans here, uh, when the Ice Age was still hot and booming, or I should say cold, is at one point uh, Russia and North America were connected. Yes. And there is scientific 
evidence that a cousin of the orangutan, um, uh, Gigantopithecus, Gigantopithecus, did exist. There was yes. a quote unquote Bigfoot like creature so, at one point. Yes, that he is true. Ten, ten feet foot, tall yes. in all technicality at some point, point did exist. exist. So Native American stories, Gigantopithecus, is of, of Bigfoot's. Technically, did exist. You will always now. Be now my is friend. so so not to be the party pooper and be on Caleb's side here. <laughs> yes. So I do. I do believe. I do believe it. Scientifically speaking, <laughs> you guys are right. At one point, it did exist. It, it he did was real. Now the only reason why I'm saying no, as of probably as of now, as of recently, is that so with the African. Uh, uh, Congo, where chimpanzees and uh, gorillas. gorillas exist, Englishmen eventually, you know, at one point they were Africa's Bigfoot for at least a good while in the, 17th, yeah. in the 16th, 18th century, uh, when you know the the rush for uh, Africa. What was it? what was the name for it? I forgot. There was a, there's a specific name when the Englishman did it. I don't remember. Colonization of Africa. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah. They were, you know, Bigfoot was a, a, a gr the gorillas were a Bigfoot. Uh, lowland gorillas were at one point were like, yeah, they they exist. Englishmen didn't think they did exist, and eventually they found them. Uh, but that in about what 20, 40 years, sixty years, they you know, hey, this thing exists. We have been on the North American continent for over. 400 years if you want to use vikings as an example over like a thousand if, if anything uh because there is evidence they were here for probably a lot longer than the englishman uh but there has no been at currently unless you want to build believe some films in their uh, authenticity uh, mm. no actual evidence of a large 10 foot tall or nine foot tall uh large hominid existing but at one point it didn't uh, I won't lie. It most likely crossed over that land bridge like a plethora of other animals. There mm. is crossover between mammoths. Which would uh, explain Yeti and yeah. Bigfoot. Yeah. So, so there, guess, there, there yeah. is a lot of evidence saying yes. But as of as of 2020, Two. 2022, there probably isn't a large hominid. Maybe. But I will say as a non-believer in Bigfoot, your guys' experiences, there's yeah. nothing to explain that. Yeah. I don't believe... <laughs> Like I just, I know the experience. Like I yeah. tell, there's I, some, I have there's no idea out what there. it is. Yeah, I'm just telling you my but, story. But yeah, Bigfoot, def, uh, yeah, and whatever's out there. I, here. I agree. I agree with with Colby. There, there is something out there. Yeah. Whatever's out it there is, is also, a coward. They also yeah. tie Bigfoot to like a ghost. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard. I've heard, heard, I've heard some. I've heard too. some crazy Bigfoot conspiracies. Uh, one of them was that uh, apparently when there's a Bigfoot sighting, there's aliens too. So I'm, I know that's I know how goofy right. that sounds, but right. apparently that's a that's a thing too. Uh, I've heard that I've heard some ghost stories with Bigfoot. Apparently in Appalachia or a a Appalachia Appalachia, a Appalachia uh, there the the mountains there have a lot more. Um, Washington, of course, our 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 biggest thing is Bigfoot. That's what yeah, we're yeah. No, known for, and that's our legendary Pokemon. Yeah, that is our legendary <laughs> Pokemon in, in a sense. But with Appalachia and their and their little creatures, Bigfoot's a lot more mystical mm -hmm. in, in a sense uh I've, i remember one time uh going down a rabbit hole apparently one of their bigfoots is a wizard really yeah uh, uh basically in a weird sense it's kind of like slenderman <laughs> well no because apparently so this is so this is years like he's back a whiz at hiding yeah <laughs> no, no. so this is years back so apparently this bigfoot the grave the grave <laughs> so <laughs> He's talking about Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> so no, so I'm not. I'm not trying to make fun of it, but I think this is more of a Native American tale where this yeah. like large ape man like creature. Uh, apparently, you have to like. You can't be alone. Because mm -hmm. if you if you have to be you have to be in a pair, but if you're not in a pair or close by to somebody, uh, it will just like, Enderman teleport next to you, in a weird sense. And I know it's goofy to sound like it, but I mean that ties with our stories. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, no, it, no, no. But like, yeah, it's probably not teleporting actually. But you know, uh, with apex predators and examples like that, like jaguars and cougars, you don't hear them. Yeah. And like yeah, almost up, like yeah. like you know, oh, there's nothing around me. I turn my head again. It's you know in full view. Right. So it's like oh, you know, there's there's a, there's a lot of stories around the U.S. You hear stuff like that. Um, 
I know you guys are part native. I, I know this. And so I guess moving on from Bigfoot. So I do actually want to get into this. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll lead into it. So uh, a while back. You, are we going to talk about skinwalkers or no? Okay. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to get a sweater. A while, oh, you're going to get a sweater? Okay. okay. It's, it's, it's getting a bit cold. My legs are a little bit. It's getting cold. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait. If you're going to go, I want to s'more, can take, dang We it. can take a little quick. No, I don't want to break. Keep on going. I just want a s'more. No, we, we can take a cut. No, my dad s'more. Goes, I, I, will, I want him to hear this too. So s'more break. S'mores. <laughs> What are those Bigfoot balls? <laughs> Bigfoot <laughs> testicles? Can we get it? Can we, can, I like burning them. Andrew, are you are you recording again? No. Can we, oh man, if we could have gotten a zoom I, in on I've this. taken several pictures though. <laughs> of the of the testicles, the Bigfoot the testicles. Other, <laughs> grab the other this? <laughs> what on earth is There's this? There's no big ones. Andrew took one. There's more. Another package. Wait. Shut up. How are you gonna? Munch Bro. Your hands are done though, dude. <laughs> I'm le- I'm leaving this part in. This is the worst s'more I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> take a picture of it, Alex. Can I take a picture? Let me take a picture of how awful. <laughs> Bro, I just want to eat my s'more, bro. Why do I get roasted for just eating the s'more, bro? <laughs> Flash on. This is an awful s'more. What in God's name have you done? Not even Satan would curse the world with a s'more that awful. Okay. Anyways, after a little cut and a very dramatic, uh, <coughs> we are back. Who the cookie on the ground? Throw it in the fire. <laughs> Sacrifice it. Sacrifice it to the flames. No, this was on the ground. <laughs> uh, Dad, bring your mic back up. The dog shit all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Anyways, back to where I was going. Back. <laughs> oh my gosh, freaking Alex. Alex anyway, so, so what, what are we doing now? So, uh, going back to what I was saying before, uh, we had a little uh, thing where me and Colby had a while back. We were playing games with our cousins. Right. And, our uh, ghost story? Huh? Ghost not, story? N- well, I guess kind of. But I can't remember how we brought it up. But uh, uh, have you ever heard of the, the Wendigo? Oh. Yes. 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 Is, Alex, you know, you know the, the Wendigo? Okay. Hold on. Well, hold, the, no, no, the no, no, Wendigo, no, no. Let me finish. Let me finish. The Wendigo is a new kind of car that's coming out, right? Yeah. <laughs> a new kind of car. So we So we, br- we brought up... Uh, I think it was two years ago, we were playing games with our cousins, and one of us said Wendigo, and one of our cousins, she got really scared. She's like, don't say that. You can't say that name. You can't say the W word. Now it's like, what, Wendigo? And she's like, no, you can't say it. You can't say it three times or else it comes for you. And I was like, Wendigo, 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 Wendigo. And then she was like, well, have fun dying. <laughs> Who was that? Uh, Allie. Allie. <laughs> But uh, I, I I have been curious as of recently because I I've been bringing that joke back saying uh, Wendigo a lot. Uh, what's up with the Wendigo? What is a Wendigo? That's what, get your mic, you idiot! Eat, <laughs> I think it's it's like the Bigfoot. No, but it's, it's more, uh, it's more evil. Quick explanation: <laughs> As I'm making a swarm, Wendigos are more north, eastern, basically uh, Michigan, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. They're more. Um, so the idea with it is. Natives treated treated it as a folk tale of not being greedy and eating everything mm-hmm. during the winter season. So it shouldn't apply to this area. It's more skinwalker. It's weird. It's like well, regional variants. Skinwalker. Of Pokemon. Or what? What is it? I mean, Are, aren't skinwalkers and Wendigos the same thing? No, because one the region one's more like an evil witch mm-hmm. that transforms. The other one's a manifestation of greed mm. and eating too much, and you know, eating people cannibalism basically like you shouldn't do that during the winter months it's it's kind of that story to be honest that's a wind walk uh, um skin skinwalker yeah th- that, that too there there's there is a little bit crossover but uh the thing about uh wendigos is that they might just be entirely made up to scare the white man right but the skinwalkers though might not actually be uh mm. that is alex's quickie on that i'm making us more so uh <laughs> going off of that uh Colby, there's a lot of concern while I was uh, making my jokes about the Wendigo uh, the other day. Uh, do you have any explanation for that? 
Like with Val? Well, with what Ken was saying, why it was so bad to talk about the Wendigo. Oh, apparently she saw one. Really? That's what she says. Like, and the person she was with, like, didn't see it, but she saw it, and it scared her enough that she actually ran into the room and like just went to sleep. Like she saw it outside. Like the way she described it is like out in the woods and mm-hmm. is like peeking out, and she saw it and she's like, "Look at it! Look at that!" And then she ran off. Who was that? Ken. Ken. She ever told me that? She said it when she was here. It's just not so long ago. She said it when she was... Where did she see it here? Uh, when you guys went to Montana. In our house, though? In our property? She told the story here, but she said when she was in Montana, she saw oh, it. Oh, in Montana. Okay. I'll explain more in a bit. So, <laughs> so she, she really thinks that was a Wendigo she saw? I don't know what she thinks or... I don't know what it is, but she described it as like some lanky, skinny, kind of skeleton-looking thing just staring at her. I don't know. That's really weird. Could be. Doesn't <laughs> stop me from head. saying Wendigo though. <coughs> could be a crackhead too. Could <laughs> be a crackhead. That's very true. Skinny. There's a lot of those, but skinwalkers. That's, that's something different. Something I also don't believe in. What? Do do you have skinwalker stories? Uh, no, no. But I've I've seen it on TV. <laughs> I've seen a movie. He killed someone on a movie. movie. Uh, I saw I saw <laughs> where to go they, on a video uh, game. It's, um, uh, well, not a folklore, but it is like uh, going back to what Alex was saying about an Indian tradition or Indian folklore about these people that, in order to them to live. You know, forever that they turn into capitalism. Mm. You know, for them to do what they have to do. So, so know. far, I have not believed in ghosts, and then I started to believe in it with after the things I've seen. I didn't believe in Bigfoot after the things I've seen. There's something out there. I don't even want to take a chance with like figuring out right. if the, the skinwalkers that eat people exist that, that can <laughs> transform into other people. Supposedly, right. I do. I do. Uh, what Kobe's saying, you know. All for we have seen, you know that it's true. You know you just have the to, force. You have to it's open true. up your eyes to listen to it because um, I just believe have to have an experience. I mm. believe in, in in dark shadows. Oh, okay. So before we get into this, I'll get into yours. So, so you done with your s'mores? Yeah, I'm done. The prizes, everybody. Anyway, so. <laughs> To make a difference here, we live in the West part of the United States. We usually don't have to deal with food shortages when it comes into the winter months. Uh, it, it, there is a slight crossover, but not too much. So, windigos are, depending on where your translation comes from and the area you're in, up in those north northern parts near the Great Lakes, they are possibly made up to scare the white man, but they mm. are usually a tale to tell to kids that don't be an asshole for your... What be like that for? <laughs> I'm looking at all you guys, not you. I'm not being a dick. I'm looking at Andrew now. I don't, know. don't be an asshole and be greedy for yourself. And, um, and only do things for yourself. Actually, to the point where there's a medical condition. It's called like... Oh, fuck. What's it called? It's like when to go, and there might be like itis, or like, or it's it's a it's a it's a psychological disease that may mm-hmm. or may not be true. Where a person in the most extreme circumstances will just will kill another person to live, and it's just it's kind of out of character because you know people are usually like, well, if you die, and I'm not going to do anything, but this person actively and willingly would be like, so the Man, Oregon Trail people were Wendigos, kind that of could be possible if we're. Looking into the lore that the ones who ate had to resort to cannibalism yeah. to survive in the mountains. But usually well, they're, they're more they're more fictitious and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But it's only like it's only like this weird like uh, there's a specific word for it. If you get interested in it, you'll look into Wendigos. It'll pop up eventually. But it's like it's just kind of like a survival thing. People be like, okay, maybe because you were just so like so far gone in this point where you had to live that you mm-hmm. would do anything. And humans are a bit more conscious than other creatures so it's all like i don't care that we're the same 
and you know the whole like you shouldn't eat people because there's clear medical conditions that come to it right, that you right. really shouldn't exactly um especially the brain do if you ever were in a cannibal situation do not eat the human brain fyi it is not good for mm -hmm. you there are certain parasites that a person cannot ingest into themselves with the brain. Not parasites, bacteria, and it'll, it'll cause them problems. Mm -hmm. But yeah. usually, windigos are for that. Skinwalkers, on the other hand, to my knowledge, I'm not a full-on expert, but skinwalkers are usually medicine men or shamans that have just deuces, bitch, I'm out, and turn, turn to the that dark side. Satan. Basically, and I, I, there is some crossover, of course, because, you know, native tribes did a bit of a trading and mm -hmm. storytelling. But I think the Skinwalker is a bit older, and usually with them, from the amount of stories I've told, because 4chan loves them, I have no idea why, it's their, it's their spooky mascot, basically, is with them, they can, they're like mimics, mm -hmm. and to where they'll, they'll, they'll try to, they'll try to really win as their, as their predatory tactic, to the point where, where I've seen, um, so this is the mannequin theory, I think I've said this before in the podcast, where, with you babies, um, if you ever really show a baby uh, a doll, uh, uh, you know, literally a doll, just, no, no experience, never seen a scary movie. There is no inherent fear for this said creature. And usually with some children, there is this uh, innate fear for, uh, for this, for this doll. It's like, oh, you know, this baby. That's afraid of dolls. Really? I'm afraid of dolls. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So basically <laughs> anything, anything human like in appearance but that isn't totally human, mm -hmm. right. and, and it usually will creep out people. You know, we get it. We've seen movie stuff. You know, people right, people are right. scary. Mm -hmm. But with children, it's like they don't have any experience. So it's like this natural instinct to where it's like, oh, damn. And so why I bring up skinwalkers is there might be that little crossover where a mimic of some kind of a creature that will try to look like or impersonate somebody to you right. getting to is like, well, huh. Uh, what, what you're saying, Alex, you know, back to... Uh, about uh, dolls, mm -hmm. you know, my uh, my sisters had a lot of dolls. Mm -hmm. You know, where, when I was young, and it, I'm serious, you know, it's was, creepy. Uh, it's creepy because you walk across and, and they're they look like there, they're staring at and you. they're looking at you as you're walking across. It's like, oh man, it that's creepy. Yeah. There's a there might be a number of explanations for that too. It's just like you know there were multiple subspecies of of human around, yeah. so it could just be like a, a leftover trait from that, scientifically speaking, but. There are there is a bit of truth with some stories mm. like that. Wendigos and skinwalkers, you know, an evil shaman might have just been a really lanky and creepy person that somebody at a campfire like this could have just hyperboleed it to say, "Oh, I, I saw Gary down the street. Man was looking <laughs> crazy with that methamphetamine he made up in the in the tent." Yeah, no, so, so the the reason I really bring this up is, I, as you can probably tell I, I am a skeptic of a lot of this stuff but uh my, my niece's husband the other day when i was first making these jokes about uh skinwalkers and wendigos and i kept yelling wendigo into the night sky <laughs> he started uh telling us these stories that uh his dad experienced over in mexico and there's Ooh, this, i love mexico there's this stories. Th there's this one that really stuck out to me is i think i'm not going to tell it right and I apologize. There's a lot for not of witches in right. Mexico. That's a thing. But I remember he said that I think it was his aunts were going to catch like crawdads over by. This is just a wives' tale. Yeah, you're, just, you're explaining a wives' tale to me. Uh, you're, no, keep on going. Keep on going. I'm just making the making dad's experience. It, it, it's still yeah, like something the whole family's like, oh, that happened. That really did happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep so on going. They went down the river. We're catching crawdads, and at, they at their uh, grandma's house, like near their grandma's house. Yes. Like, cause they, they, uh, like his family lived out like in the, the mountains of Mexico. Mm -hmm. And so while they're doing this, they see this old lady. I don't remember. Did it's they say, no, they, it's they, always an old did they lady. say they knew who the old lady was or she was hunched over and they thought it was the grandma yeah. out catching the stuff already. Like shrimp. I think they catch shrimp out there. Mm -hmm. And so they went up to her, you know, saying, Hey grandma, grandma, you know, mm -hmm. trying to get her attention. And then, uh, what happened is. It turned out not to be their grandma, and like she began to transform into like this creature mm -hmm. that, like as he described it, like as they describe it, they it like was able to like bound and run through the water like no animal should be able to do. Mm. Like it was like 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 a demon, like mm. if it, a, a demon was running towards them mm. and they just hightailed it out of there. Mm. But there's a lot of stories that seem to come from 
Mexico about uh, things being able to transform yeah. into human shape. So, so knowing my Mexican mythologies and stuff, there is a there is a weird amount of like you know I I just explained skinwalkers and windigos you know windigos being you know people we'll say who, chupacabra <laughs> no El chupacabra Jimmy Chunga Jimmy Chunga <laughs> no but with with Mexican folklore there is a lot of um, transformation like an abundance of things uh, a lot of now I'm kind of thinking about it I'd have to ask my grandma and stuff coming from Mexico and stuff but there's a lot of like. Mexico is spooky. Yeah, like there's, I, there's a lot of yeah weird uh, things. Yeah, that yeah. Go Mexico is <clears throat> not now. You know, not the whole like oh, an American's talking <clears throat> about Mexico thing, but it's like no, like there's it's, it's I know it's Mexicans talking about yeah, Mexico Mexicans. thing. That's really yeah. got it's, you like it's weird. Yeah, there's a lot, there's yeah. something a lot going of black on. stuff. Yeah, no, there's yeah, a lot of black stuff. Yeah, there's there's a weird yeah, yeah over yeah, in Mexico. Yeah. Okay, yet again, I'm bringing up the Southwest United States. Mexico is in that category. <laughs> I, I don't walkers and stuff. I just don't it trust it down there. there. Huh. Like that southern. I'm telling you. And then it's in the it's in it's in the most driest and coldest regions. The forest is almost never brought up when it comes to these tales, just an FYI. There's just there's a lot of bad stuff. Yeah, there's a lot there. in the world that <laughs> yeah. we just don't like things can just hide forever and we never know about them. Yeah, like, it's you like, know it's a, a surprising fact about history is that like what was it? Ninety-eight or ninety-seven percent of everything that we've ever done is never recorded. So, meaning the history that we know now is so fragmented, it technically isn't true. Yeah. So it's all like, what, oh, we know all the things about the Romans, right? No, it's actually not. It's like, oh, it's like, like a fragment of a fragment. So, and especially when we destroyed cultures like with the Native Americans, we don't know that what is insane what is really out there. Yeah. A lot of their mythology, like the, the th- gone overnight, Thunderbird could be a real thing. The uh, Wendigos and Skinwalkers, Could they might thing? actually really be out there, but we never listen to them. And Bigfoot, Sasquatch. Yeah. I mean, and they Bigfoot. got them on their totem poles. That's no. true. I mean, you're thinking about that. You know, it's all imaginary. I mean, you got these. There's a certain there's a certain realism to everything. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, you got the, the you go to Seattle, yeah. you see the the, the natives. Yeah. I mean, for hundreds of years, they got that yeah. symbol of that. Of Bigfoot, of yeah. Sasquatch. Most of their teachings is on like energy recycle, mm-hmm. yeah. so they know a lot about like energy. So I'm just you live on a more. continent for over ten thousand years, especially you, when you're sharing these yeah. stories, yeah, yeah down from generation to generation. People share it, sharing the land, yeah, sharing the land. Everybody goes out there. I mean, you know, hunters, people's uh, off the boats, you know, fishing, and they see these monsters, yeah. see these creatures. So, I mean, it, it's it, it's there. So, not to continue forward, but you know we're getting a little yeah. bit late. And so you brought up you brought up what I describe shadow people. Would you like to elaborate a little bit further? Because we have a we have a commonality here, Mister Perez. As I've explained this before on the podcast. So would you like to explain your little incidences or encounters with these? Will you tell me what you think shadow people are? So. I guess I'm going to restate for the story yet again. Uh, Andrew knows about this. I've told him at least once or twice. So ever since I didn't live here originally in Moses, I was born here, but eventually I, my parents lived in a town over Othello. I lived with my aunt for about nine years, 12, 12 years. And our living room, our living room probably took up about 50% or nearly close to that of the, uh, of the household. I think probably my aunt was, her room was probably second. Uh, we had a door, so it's right next to the living room. The door is probably as big as I am now, and it's an old-fashioned door, so very mm-hmm. similar. No, you guys don't have one, but if you ever see older houses, there's usually a glass pane. Right. And so with this glass pane, um, when I was very young, uh, I don't know. There, there might be, as of now, thinking about it, saying it so many times over, there might be a little bit crossover because that door... There's, there's always bad memories with that door. Random people showing up, knocking. Andrew remembers it. He'll. There's a really weird crossover between people. We always lived in a sketchy neighborhood, mm. but this one always recurred and it was always the same. There would be a boy, a black figure around my size when I was younger. I was a big kid, so. But like up to the door frame, so he, he'd look over into the glass pane and it would just be a complete black figure and it'd always, always look in. It always show up there and or in the back of the of the house 
in the uh, sliding door. It'd just be just like a boy my size, always there. And I'd always be like, oh, that's weird. There's always It would always be a double take. Is it always a double take with you? Or like, what? What What the hell was over there? It's wow. always a double take with me. Um, but as of recently, as of becoming an adult, um, in this new house that I live in with my parents, uh, there's a, common, a commonality with two. So one of them will sometimes always have to take a double take where one will always be in the living room standing. I'll always see it it's just standing there. Oh yeah, uh, uh, there will always there will always no, be one is, standing there. This, I'm, I'm listening to him because it's, it's I can relate what yeah. he's saying. There's always one standing in the living room, and uh, the one that Caleb kind of should recognize or at least know is how our entryway is located. You know yeah, where the, yeah, yeah. the the pantry is. You guys see it literally every time we're at my house recording. There's the pantry, but around that corner leads into my driveway or into the garage. The garage. And sometimes I I won't I don't know if it's the little boy. Or, or the same creature, but it'll always like peek around the oh, corner. Oh no! Not and I always, peak. I and I always have to take a double take. I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and it'll always be that. And there might have been once or twice where there's it's shown up in the hallway. Well, I'm not 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 looking down my room, but it's always when you when you um when when I'm coming out of my room. So not yeah. when I'm going to my room. It always will show up. And I think I might have seen him once or twice in the bathroom. I don't really know, but. Well, you see him quite frequently then. <laughs> well, that's kind of scary. This, and the thing is, too, so here's the third part. So Caleb uh, knows about this. You work in short stay in the hospital. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But this one I think I have an explanation for is when I'm really tired, uh, there's the there's a hallway in short stay, and it's just long. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember one time vividly seeing uh, a very – this one's different, though. It's not man-shaped. It's lanky. It's arm. It has longer fingers. Uh, has fingers long as its arms or long as its forearms, and it was really lanky. I was like, "What yeah. the fuck?" Uh, and when I saw it that day, uh, about a couple seconds later, Melissa had showed up and scared the fuck out of me. I was like, "Dude, I was about to sock the fuck out of you." <laughs> like, no, it was. And, and I know, I know. Oh, you got scared? No, but there was, there was, there was literally a, a, a <laughs> hostile saw, saw intent something. to kill with me when I saw Melissa. I had. I was just working on the wall or something or I was looking into one of the rooms and I had heard something and I looked over and I saw Melissa, but my brain automatically was like, I already saw something previously. Kill instinct activated. So I was just about to deck her. I was like, holy shit, dude. So I had had to like halt myself. Yeah. My, my, uh, my daughter Candace, when she was a nurse over there that she worked there at the the hospital. And, Mm -hmm. uh, she says that sometimes that down below where they, sometimes when they do surgeries, Mm -hmm. That right across mm-hmm. is the morgue. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Yep, yep, yep. true. Uh-huh. One of the girls that died there from an overdose that they were, uh, that they were, um, I guess I don't know what you want to say, putting her away or you know, yeah, do her thing. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and they put her in there and they started working again, and that she saw that girl right there looking. <laughs> Hospitals are weird. I have not had a crazy experience at the hospital, but I will say not to not to disprove anything Alex has said because I do think that that's crazy. But uh, when I've had that old house was insane. That, Andrew, that, Andrew can vouch that. I, I'm going to be honest; it was oddly creepy how many people would show up. Andrew, yeah. have I ever told you about the white guy that tried to break in and then I had to lock the door in the back? Have I never told you that story? Because I recently remembered. I was like. There was one time someone almost broke through the back entrance, and I, I had he, he had knocked, he had child, knocked in the beginning. No, but I knew the there was electric uh, electrocution workers working back there one time. No, that was that was an electric man. That was when the. the but no, but he was wearing all white. There was no orange that time. It was when the telephone poles came down because there was a semi truck that I should not have been there, where yeah. they were. <laughs> yeah, like what the hell was that guy doing? Yeah, so that's what happened. But but, but it happened before that though. No. No, there was there was definitely a couple moments, but I but there yeah, but but with me there's there, our backyard had an electric uh, a pole, so it always made sense why people was back there. But sometimes I would notice things, yeah. and there would always be weird people that showed up, bro. Like not to be racist against my old culture, but scary looking ass Mexicans would just show up one day. <laughs> I'm like, who the fuck are you? Oh, and my aunt Paula would just know them. I'm like. I've That's never Pedro. seen them again. That's in my Pedro. House. Yeah, you give them. <laughs> I'm just like, what the who are you? I, was, I know eight or Who eight. are you people? Yeah, just my aunt just knew people, dude. And it just was like really creepy. Maybe they're looking for your aunt. Hey. Yeah, but my aunt was always there, but they weren't. They was just it was just so ominous. It's like, oh hola amigo. And I was like Who are you? Who, are Who you? the fuck are you? 
<laughs> yeah. Like, like I was going to say, though, just just real quick, uh, wh- back when I worked at, well, just any time I have a, like, lack of sleep. Mm-hmm. I, they I, show I, up. Yeah, they show up. The the, the shadow demons. But sometimes they'll be uh, fully awake. Uh, I, like, I don't think I've fuck? said this on the podcast before, but it's like on uh, the game Don't Starve, when you start to go crazy, mm-hmm. there's just, like, crawling, like, demons look like crawling around like dog looking like at arby's i literally saw a shadow dog run in the corner that's of my a eye. new one i've never heard of it you actually it. see it i i and, saw and it it was like it stop and look at you no it, it, it like darted yeah my, mine mine like, it was like it was mine like stairs yeah my my, it, my stairs it's like yeah. like i always say it's always like in the corner of my eye so i'm i'm pretty sh- sure it's a lack of sleep right, but i right. remember with the sh- the shadow dog that was like the breaking point because I always was like, "Oh, it's just my imagination." Like I but just, it always, it I just saw something random. But the shadow dog was very clearly. I saw a dog, a black dog, and I remember because I was mopping the the kitchen, and I saw that because it was right at the front entrance. And in my mind, I was like, "Somebody brought their dog." I was like, "They couldn't have. We're closed." And I remember mopping, stopping m- my mop. I look over at Steve, who's cleaning up the kitchen. Uh, wiping down his area. And I'm like, Steve, did you just see a shadow dog run past? And he goes, Johnny Cash, you need some sleep. <laughs> so what okay. about, I want to hear my, yours My now. dad has crazy stories. I want to I hear this now. Oh, we, man. We this, have a lot to relate to, apparently. <laughs> I didn't expect this in this podcast. Yeah. This, this, one, this one's this kind of a little crazy because um, uh, this one uh, really freaked me out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This one freaked me out. Um, it was... Um, Oh heck! What was it? Two thousand seven. Oh gosh! It was yeah, two thousand thirteen, two thousand twelve, two thousand twelve. Anyway, so um, it was a uh, uh, Memorial Weekend, mm-hmm. okay, and um, uh, everybody was going to the go to my sister's house to have a barbecue, and and me and my wife we have. We uh, we were fighting. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so I was tired, and I was like, you know, you go. And I, I was mad. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to go to there. So anyway, so um, I was downstairs, and I was sleeping, and uh, I was watching John Wayne. It was a John Wayne weekend, and I was watching uh, the train robbers. Mm-hmm. And the train robbers was on, and I was watching it, and I closed my eyes, and the show was over, and I'm just laying on... Um, I don't know if you ever seen our, our, our downstairs, but I we got a couch going this way, a couch going that way. Mm-hmm, yes. Anyway, so I was laying this way, and I'm watching on the big TV, mm-hmm. and I'm watching, and all of a sudden, uh, True Grit comes on, and it's already starting to get dark. You know, starting, you know, everything's starting to get dark, and uh, I was sitting there, and I was watching it, uh, the movie, and I just saw this small face come up from. On the other side of a counter, mm-hmm. you know how we have we have those uh, the wall pillar, mm-hmm. yeah, and then like that window thing. Mm-hmm. So you said like is around that. Mm-hmm. Open and, and, and I'm sitting there and I'm just watching TV, and I'm just looking at it. It's like I'm looking at at uh, the phone camera, your brother, okay? Uh huh. And it's like right there on the side, but it, it's close. It's it's all close, and this dark face just comes up. Is it pure black? It's pure black. Hmm. And it comes up and it looks at me, and I'm sitting there and I'm looking at it, and then it just <laughs> you got scared, and then it just goes down like that where I can't see it, and then I was like, "What? Mm-hmm. It, what is that?" In the back of my head, mm-hmm. my hairs just you just rose <laughs> up, mm-hmm. like what was that I just saw? Because mm-hmm. I'm the only one in the house. It was like a a figure, mm-hmm. an actual person that's just popped up and slowly rose up and looked at me. <laughs> he said, oh, shit. Oh, well, he noticed me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he did, and it just went right back down, you know, and it was like, you know, I had goosebumps and everything, and I freaked. Mm. I freaked. I got up, and I just started running after it, like, get that F out of my house. Mm. I went every, I went, I went to every room, get that F, and every room that I went to, I opened up the doors, and I was waiting, you know, Waiting to see something, to meet it, you know, to meet it. Mm. You know, and, but yet, you know, you know, it's like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And there's a phantom figure. I'm going to start yeah, punching it. Like, what am I gonna Shadow do? boxing. You know, and I went to, I Literally. Went first, first day I went, it was into Caleb's room. And I was like, get the F out of my house. And it wasn't there. And I was just like, 
You know, mm-hmm. and then I went to Colby's room, get the F out of my house, went to the bathroom, ran upstairs like a mm-hmm. crazy man, get the F out of my house, checked everything. Mm-hmm. So, and it, it was gone. It was mm-hmm. gone. But man, that's the most scariest thing in my life. Mm. Besides this guy getting a car accident. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh. What, what's crazy about that is something paranormal would always happen every Memorial this, Weekend. This one you've explained. Uh, th- have I explained this I think you. Ha- I think you have. Either either to me personally. I, I think I explained it to you personally. Because yeah. I, I haven't said this on the podcast. But every Memorial Weekend, something insane happens. And uh, th- this incident was like, it, when it was started to like peak, like there, it started get to, getting to a point that like this ghost was starting to get cocky. Like it knew it, it was hot stuff. It knew it, it could get away with things at the house, and so I believe it was 2015, two like three years. It was a few years after my dad's incident, but me and Colby come home first from a barbecue, and we. We spent all day in the hot sun doing outdoor activities. <laughs> playing volleyball. Playing volleyball and stuff. And th- there seems to be a common trend of being tired. Uh, there is. Or, or, or There's being, this trend, or being, but this doesn't... Ex- this Being tired does not explain what happens right here. Mm-hmm. So we're sitting down watching... Uh, we're, we're about... I think we're watching... Uh, Great Escape. The n- one with Snake plus... Game. Yeah, the uh, Escape from New York. Escape from we're watching <laughs> Escape from New York. <laughs> and we're like, hmm... Yeah, we're just enjoying our end of the day, waiting for everybody else to come home, watching Snake Plissken on TV. And uh, we look, we're just watching the TV, and we had uh, my my favorite movie of all time, <laughs> Milo and Otis, sitting on the, the ghost sh- mess with Milo and Otis, and you had it. Yeah, the, he. So Milo and Otis shitting, sh- <laughs> it's shitting. sitting on his <laughs> top shelf, <laughs> and uh, as it's sitting up there. And we're watching this. All of a sudden, it just flies off. Mm. Like it just get, like it's thrown off the shelf. It's not. It's not like it toppled over or anything. It was like, like yeah, just, like me with the fish. You with the fish <laughs> tossed off the off the shelf. How old were you? Uh, I had to have been like twelve, thirteen. So I was like, when that happened, I was like, ghost. We're tired. We don't. We don't. We're like, <laughs> ghost we, don't we, we don't need to deal with this. Okay, we're tired. You just threw my favorite movie <laughs> off the shelf. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna be a jerk, just leave. So that was the last time we ever had. Yeah, like a ghost. we never had a paranormal experience. But this guy still has paranormal experiences. No, happening. not too long ago. Yeah, it was this like maybe not even three weeks ago. Probably a month ago. About what a month. What's 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 ha- what's happened recently? You can explain it. Do you know? Do you know your own story? You're talking about with the radio. Oh <laughs> uh, no, I don't want to talk about that. You want to talk about scary. that? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, so anyways, <laughs> so different, anyways, it's recent, it's uh, radio. He was uh, listening to music. I started, started he's moping going about static. something. This is what. Whenever he's moping around, this is when it happens. Is that just a stand user, bro? Like <laughs> he gets sad, he gets sad or angry, and just like a star platinum just shows up. So anyways, it comes to a point when uh, I guess the radio turns up by itself. Mm-hmm. And it freaks him out, and I hear I can hear him. I'm sitting in watching TV. And I can hear him shut the garage door, mm-hmm. and I hear him like run out real quick through the door of the garage. He's like looking up and like locking things up, and he's like scared looking out the window. And when that happens, I hear something run into the door. Uh, I'm I was there con- to confirm this. Something so sl- like. Like it's as if, check, like a yeah, push. It's just as if somebody shoulder checked that door with and all I, their might. I immediately, like, I saw my on his face that he was he, scared. He was so scared. I, and immediately, I, was, I get up and I open the door and I check and there's nothing. And uh, I like, walk through the whole. It could garage, not have been nothing. the cat. It literally could not have been the cat. It was a heavy hit on that iron mm. door. What it was is that the the radio would would turn up by itself. Mm. But like it was crazy because I was like, "What's what's going on with him?" He's running around all scared, and then I hear him close the garage door, and then he comes out of the you know through that door. No, no, we know. And he closes it and locks it, and he like takes a he like back steps, and he's just staring at the door. And I hear a boosh, mm. something run right into the door. I'm like, "Oh, he's really scared. He's really getting chased by something." So that's why I got and up for and more, I checked more the door. Pretext. He has a lot of uh, stories that. Or like you can't explain, but th- at the same time, this is the same guy who saw something in the yard one day, something with long legs and a white 
butt looked like a, a dog creature. <laughs> it was and a deer. He, it, it was a deer, but this guy <laughs> fortified the house by putting a chair two feet in front of the door. Dude, not hey, blocking the, this, not blocking the door, just two feet in front of the door to <laughs> stop this creature from coming in, only for him to realize it was a deer. Hey, but, there's nothing about there's nothing bad about being cautious. But though. this story <laughs> is something else. Cause the the way he the he, the way he was afraid and the way the door got slammed like was I heard scary enough. Where it hit at the door, it was like at shoulder length, and mm. it was like it was heavy. Like and I mimicked it. Like I had to put some force in. And it. so mm. we, me and Colby, investigate the garage. We don't find anything. So we're like, okay. And we hear the radio super loud. So we turn we turn it off. Colby, I see Colby turn off the radio. Mm-hmm. And we go back inside, and I'm like, all right, time to start watching The Simpsons again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, mm. as we're sitting down, go. as we're sitting down. Slowly, we just hear the music just start blasting. Because oh, we're explaining like what happened. Yeah. We're like, this just happened. Right? I think we're. Oh, that's really weird. Oh. And I'm like, wait a second. You guys hear that? And as the radio was blasting, blasting like, loud, loud we blasting. Open the door. Go back in the garage. It was loud. So Andrew in, in the morning case, blasting. <laughs> Andrew in the morning blasting. Yeah, Andrew, Andrew. So <laughs> Andrew laughing not only did we <laughs> confirm his story tw- once, it happened twice. That something that we could not explain happened. Unless the cats are magically fast enough to go up, turn on the radio, <laughs> and then leave. And then hit those bodies against the, the door. That like they would have catapulted themselves. Honey. But kind of yeah, that that was a really weird, weird crazy story. time. Yeah, I guess this is next time we have a campfire episode, we can talk about cults just because it's yeah, <laughs> it's, it's getting late. About cults. Hey, but <laughs> there, there's I want one you story. To tell the Bunny Man Bridge story. His the signature, oh, his bro. signature yes. campfire it's, story. It's not a, Halloween. A true story. I don't Dad, know. Dad, tell the story. Oh man, this is a signature camping story. He tells the story every okay, single I'll, time at the campfire. Can we take a break? You want a break? You want a break? Yeah, I want a break because I got to think about the whole thing. The whole oh, he story. wants to he wants to prep time this. <laughs> okay, I'll give you five minutes. All right, five minutes good. Five minutes. I'm gonna get good. something Not, spicy. I'm gonna get another s'more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're still recording. All right. With the Marvel movies, the way I think they're going, we're it's gonna have all the noobs team up and just gonna get wasted. I think the old people are gonna come in and save the day. That's what I think. I want you to keep that. <laughs> it's been documented. All right. All right. Oh, <laughs> that's right, huh? The Bunny Man story. <laughs> that's right, that's as right. if I you weren't forget. thinking about <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, this is, not a, this, is, this is not a... Um, a good story. This is why it's last, because it's the most terrifying thing I've ever heard. Yeah, it is. Well, uh, I guess uh, back in 1932 and... 1932? Why are we going so far back? Uh, that's the way it goes. Okay, let me, let me go, go. Go, go. Anyway, um, I can't remember the name of the place that this happened. It's in Pennsylvania. But anyway... Um, Jen. Jen. <laughs> it was in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. And um, what happened is that uh, they had these um, uh, hospital for the insane. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, they I guess the place was closing down, so they put them in a bus. So this bus was uh, going down the road, and uh, it got into a wreck. It rolled over, and you know uh, some of the uh, the patients. I say patients. That is the correct term. Yes. Yeah, because they were mentally ill. Mm-hmm. Uh, got killed, and some of them escaped. And there's two that escaped. Anyway, so they got the rest of them except for two. And um, anyway, so one of them would eat rabbits. Mm-hmm. Capture rabbits on along the the place, you know, and, and, you know, in the area because they're in, in uh, I guess in Pennsylvania, it's a it's a big area. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't see, maybe it's Virginia, but anyway, it's a, it's a, it's a, can somebody, uh, uh, you could look it up. One? It's, this is a true story. Can you help me on that one? Andrew, you're, um, bunny man story. I don't know. What's Virginia. It? I think it's Virginia. It's Virginia. So anyway, so, um, so these two inmates are out there in the forest, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, one of them, uh, gets rabbits and eats them and the end. Yeah. Huh? Virginia. Thank you, sir. So anyway, so uh, Not Jen. 
so uh, they're trying to uh, get these guys, right? Because, mm-hmm. they, you know, so uh, anyway, so the way it happens is that one of them kills the other guy and hangs him off a, a bridge. Mm. Well, they were searching for the two for like years and mm. they didn't. They like oh they got away and then just one year they found the partner hung up like hung recently up, yeah. or was it there for a while? It, uh, it was, I'm pretty sure it was recently that mm, he, okay, they that found did that. one of them right. So anyway, so uh, so they they would mock it the, after they I don't think they ever caught the the other guy. The way the story goes, you know, you got to research this. Okay, mm-hmm. right, this is a research. Anyway, time. so um, I guess your podcast, you guys, the Bunny Man Bridge. Look, look up that story, okay? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and if I made some mistakes on it, you know, let me know. Alex will probably look into it later well, and explain it. Uh, hold right. on. I, I just have to say, my dad's the only person so far in this entire podcast who's ever taken accountability on a story he's told <laughs> and said, you guys do their research if I told something wrong. Yeah, please. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> please, please. No. Anyway, so what happens, you know, through the years that um, uh kids would would uh, go down there to the bridge mm-hmm. and, and it was a railroad track bridge mm-hmm. okay which i had a what it was is railroad track bridge and had a road that went underneath the bridge mm-hmm. something like um oh heck we don't even have that bridge down here like going through othello mm-hmm. okay you know, although though well, i know what you had a bridge going across and you got a highway 17 mm-hmm. so it's, it's something like that but it's you know in a forested area mm-hmm. and it's flat it's not like that but Something like that. So anyway, so that's where they that they found that guy hung. Mm-hmm. Okay, the the convict or the patient. I can't even say convict. So anyway, so through the years, uh, everybody would uh, would make fun of that place. Mm-hmm. So you have kids that would go down there, and it was always Halloween that they would down there. I don't know if it had some kind of a meaning when they found the body or mm-hmm. when he died there on Halloween. It was always uh, October thirty first mm-hmm. that they you know that they were down there. So anyway, so people go d- or the kids, teenagers would go down there, and it's documented all these murders. Mm-hmm. You know they would go down there and they oh, would that, say that was the thing that they thought the other inmate that was eating the bunnies was dead, but then this occurrence started happening. Mm-hmm. So they would say that, uh, as a matter of fact, one was a survivor. They would see a light coming down. Down the tracks, mm. and then we'll go down there where those kids were partying and drinking, mm-hmm. and then they hear screaming and everything, and that all of a sudden, you know, that it got quiet, and the next day they would see all those kids hanging from, mm. hanging from the, hanging from the from the bridge. Colby's <laughs> getting a face full of. Air. I'm not scared. <laughs> it's uh, getting closer to death. It's as they say, uh, the smoke follows the the beautiful. So uh, Jen was correct. But okay, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Someone clip that. Hi, I'm, I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it seems like. But it's been, it, it uh, Alex. Mm-hmm. It's been going on for for. Um, I'd have to look into this. Mm-hmm. It's been going on for decades. This is like the first incident. Mm. It keeps happening and happening and happening. It it was it happened so bad that uh, a lot of these teenagers were getting killed. Mm-hmm. It was like a Friday the Thirteenth movie, you know? mm. but I'm like that. How many would you say died every time? Oh god! There's, wait, there's like multiple bodies. Like well, every it, was, time. it became like a dare. Like oh, the kids would yeah. be like, "Go on dare. Bunny Man Bridge on, you know, midnight mm-hmm. at." On well, Halloween, Friday the thirteenth, or uh, the there'd always be, it'd always be the few that chickened out, and those were the survivors, and they'd they'd report that mm. light always they'd coming through the light, you know, and oh, and, uh, huh. find them. So anyway, so yeah, it it's um, it it's been happening for a long time. It's like Freddy meets fucking the Predator, dude. <laughs> or uh, or I looked or, it up, I looked it up on on uh, on the internet, and they actually closed off that bridge. Mm. The police department actually. Got metal, uh, what do you call it? Uh, fencing and everything. Mm. You know, they got fencing. So and there's, everything. there's like, I might have to look in this later. Are you fucking serious? Wow. So Alex won't have to take a deep. We might have like an own dedicated episode, episode to this. They got a movie on it. There's a documentary. What? Uh-huh. Can you can you give us a synopsis, Andrew? It has to be a wiki on it. 
Uh, oh, apparently Seth MacFarlane knows Val. <laughs> this goes deep. What the fuck? Well, he's from Virginia. So wait, does that mean? Like so that technically true. means that the Bunny Man exists in the Simpsons, Family Guy, and American Dad universe because they had yeah, that. I just think I just think that it's a bad spirit, evil spirit. You know, because it lasted. Somebody knows where their hunting ground is for this. This is a kids. thing that lasted for like sixty years. And it was going on so this much. Was Sixty years of Bunny Man to murders. Like the 80s. 40s really like 40 it happened in the 30s so it's it's so it's, this, so, so it's, al- it's almost 90 years so you're okay right, I'm, I'm assuming uh so they never found the the other inmate or no no I, I, never I, 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 I never no and the thing that like there's this one personal story that he always tells at the end mm-hmm. with like a lady that saw the light and like it turned her hair gray and stuff and she turned old uh, mm-hmm. that's, I don't know. Uh, that's you know fictitious, just for storytelling purposes. Yeah, but know. um, that's the West, way they that's describe Virginia. like how Virginia. it's the a light that comes through and the people scream, and next thing you know, like all the kids are hanging over a bridge with their guts, like uh, just like the bunnies, you know, with their guts spilled mm, out. Wow, right we're going bridge. full circle back it, it, to the slaughtering it, of it, animals. It, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's dark. I, this that's this, to remind this, me of it. They get his pants. Currently his pants. I'm not get disemboweled, but I'm just saying, you know, that it's been so bad that they actually closed you know, it I up. I saw a picture of it mm. where they actually got bob wire where you can't go under that bridge you no more. You can't go under or over. You can't go near that bridge. It's, it's basically, it's a, it's a, it's, um, there's, there's well, a somebody look it up. And look this up. What's the lore? <laughs> He's looking up right now. He's looking at so it. So apparently I have to look into this. This is, this is going to be, there's going to be an episode dedicated to this. Is this going to be my, my enter and yeah, my. Pasta? Yeah. This is real. Mm. Mm. This, this is, is before creepy pastas existed. Apparently. This is like this was on in you know those scary the shows. Zodiac Man, no, nah, the Bunny Bridge <laughs> Killer, bro. Back in the nineties when they did those scary stories, mm. this is where we got it from. I, I don't know how I, I came across that that story. I don't know how I came across the Bunny Man Bridge. And it's like scary stories, like or haunted haunted. Places and it, they maybe told, maybe that's what it was, and that's where it started. Like it, it talked about the story, and then there's a documentary on it. Yeah, explaining and, and, like and the whole there thing. was a, a, a. I mean, I'm thinking through the years, at least 50, 50 people have been ki- ki- murdered there. Fifty. Yeah, it's like every years. like ten years. There's just a body. There's count? like a group of friends. That, group of friends that they, they, they want to do the dare. Got to go do the dare. Those dang teens. <laughs> Pretty much was like Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, <laughs> that's what like Friday the Thirteenth. I mean, it's it's it's, uh, it's one of the scariest um, stories I've I've uh, I've ever read and heard. It's it's heavily documented. Apparently, and Andrew Andrew's looking at the Wikipedia page, <laughs> right? Like people actually there is like is there people actually died. died. I need a no. Nah, this is gonna be like its own dedicated episode now. There's headlines. I, I told you it's this documents, actually, police no reports. <laughs> at, I was looking at like the Wikipedia first, but there's a. This like, isn't creepy positive. This is real. This is real. Yeah. And then there's like headlines and shit. No. Washington Post got it. What? One of the most gruesome stories from Ranker. Like, I don't know. It's just pretty big, bro. Like, this is this <laughs> is an hmm. interesting topic. Hmm. There, there might, might be a. Is this going to be a future Halloween episode? We could do a full. I don't go think so weird. go oh, to that here, here. go I'll to do, that I'll bridge on Halloween and talk about this. <laughs> oh, dude! <I'd> have, <laughs> Alex would have poop and pee. In I his would pants. be scared. No, I would definitely. <laughs> Alex would, would have to bring diapers. No. <laughs> no. Well, this is the end. This is that was basically the end yeah, of the story. Uh, yeah, I think we're good now. Hopefully, uh, somebody out there is listening to this at the dead of night. Probably so they are currently <laughs> quaking in their boots. So I don't know. Well, um, hopefully. Um, Who's ever watching this episode? You know they hear this story. Please do not go down there. <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> don't Virginia go there. viewers, don't do it. <laughs> you don't have Vir- the balls. Virginia teenagers, don't go down there. Yeah, don't go down there. I think they opened up the bridge again, though. Mm. Don't go there. Don't, go don't there. do it. Don't do no. it. Oh, hold on. We'll put a warning up here. I'm going to say it for the listeners. Uh, if somebody finds us and your kid did it, it's not on our fault. We do not. Uh, uh, don't uh, go to dangerous places. Affiliate. Yeah, <laughs> we do not affiliate with anything we've said so far. This is for uh, fictitious and storytelling purposes, and entertainment, and entertainment disclosure. So if you do it, it's on you. Viewer discretion is, is advised. advised. <laughs> so, any copyrights from the NFL is probably. <laughs> <laughs> Anything well, within the Meta's brand? <laughs> uh, 
I think that's that about wraps up uh, yeah. today's episode. Uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you, Dad, for joining on this episode with your amazing stories. I knew. Thank you, I Caleb. Knew you, I knew you'd come up with something good because you always have uh, good stories. I don't know. Thank you, Caleb. Alex, thank you for having me on your broadcast. Okay, Colby, Colby thanks for not breaking, breaking the podcast. Even though I did it off screen, Col <laughs> Alex broke the podcast this time without repercussions. Thankfully, all right, that I know of. Yeah, yeah. we'll see what happens in post. Thank uh, you, cameraman. Camera, camera guy, guy was there. Camera guy sitting <laughs> in the darkness as we're telling scary stories. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I hope to have you guys have me again. Okay, yeah, one day. Thank well, you, maybe, Pop. Maybe during Halloween or something. No, Alex, no, no, not, not <laughs> buddy, man. <laughs> Alex, any not last buddy, words? Man. Um. I don't stay think hydrated. Stay, stay oh, yeah. hydrated. Oh, like, comment, share, subscribe. Stay hydrated. Follow us on our socials. Just me and Caleb. I don't know about these guys. Um, we'll have Fun Tune Times linked again. If you don't watch it, you are a fake fan. There you go. So, uh, deuces. Uh, peace out. Colby, put your peace sign up.